All right, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our City Commission meeting tonight on this December 13th, our last Commission meeting of this year. Um, I want to welcome everyone here tonight as we call this meeting to order. Uh, we'll start tonight with a moment of silence and then Pledge of Allegiance, uh, then we'll go on to roll call. We do have just a couple opportunities for public comment tonight. Uh, we have public comment on agenda items, which will be at the beginning of the meeting. We don't have any scheduled public hearings, and then at the end of the meeting, we have public comments on any other issues. Um, as we get started tonight, I do want to just clarify a couple things. I know uh, some of us have been contacted by folks who thought there was an ordinance that we would be uh, considering tonight related to um, pan aggressive panhandling and sit and lie. I just want to be really clear that we don't have anything on our agenda that we will be voting on today. Um, tonight, uh, related to those items, we did have a pretty robust, comprehensive conversation today during our public safety committee meeting uh, where we outlined next steps and some of the things that we'll be doing in addition to some of our efforts with a lot of our partners in our community, both in the private sector and the nonprofit sector. Um, but I just want to make sure that that's clear. If you're here tonight thinking that we're going to vote on something, I want to just clarify that that's not the case. And we'll have time at the end for the city manager to also provide some additional updates as well as my colleagues around this table. Um, so with that, if you would join me in a moment of silence before we move to Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, next we will have roll call. Commissioner Lanier. Present. Commissioner Ruppart. Here. Commissioner Jones. Here. Commissioner Asasi. Present. Commissioner O'Connor. Present. Commissioner Moody. Present. And Mayor Bliss. Yes. Uh, and we do have an interpreter here tonight. Hello, welcome. So if you do need assistance with interpretation services, uh, please let us know and we'll make sure that we have someone to support you. Go ahead. Good evening. We're pleased to provide a Spanish interpretation services <clears throat> this evening. This include interpretation during the meeting and for those who want to provide public comment. Buenas noches. Estamos complacidos en proveer interpretación en español esta noche. Esto incluye interpretación durante la reunión y para aquellos que quieren proveer comentario público. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, so that will take us to our first opportunity for public comment. And again, this is public comment on agenda items that we're voting on tonight. So earlier today, we had a number of city commission uh, standing committee meetings uh, where we voted. So the first opportunity for public comment uh, is specifically on those items. So a couple things related to public comment. We ask that you share your name, the city that you live in. You'll be given up to three minutes to speak on this first opportunity for public comment. We ask that you're really clear about what agenda item you're speaking about uh, and then we will move through the agenda and then as I said at the end we have another opportunity for public comment so before I move to uh, opening up public comment uh, with Lucas I just want to remind everyone that we do have rules for this space around public comment uh, we ask that you respect other people's opinion even if you don't agree with it people have a right to be heard by this elected body we do ask that you refrain from clapping or cheering booing or using profanity vulgar language threatening name calling or making derogatory comments we also ask that you direct your comments to the elected body and not to anyone in the audience uh, so with that I'll open it up for our first oppor first opportunity for public comment and again this is specific to agenda items good evening Lucas first ward let's take a look at fiscal item four: art prize funding through the lens of last week's chamber antics and the letter you're going to read into record tonight seeking frivolous and redundant criminalization of the unhoused. This city should reconsider sponsorships that benefit those who have chosen to present themselves as a self-parody of greedy power brokers who foolishly chose Christmas as the time to show out, aligning behind a dubious champion like Josh Lunger. These would-be recipients of your sponsor sponsorship approvals are similar to the various villains of holiday tales. They first reminded me of Scrooge, are there no prisons? Are there no workhouses and still in operation? Those who are badly off must go there, and if they would rather die, they had better do it and reduce the surplus population. 
Jacob Marley described these people's disposition with Scrooge quite well. I wear the chain I forged in life. I made it link by link, yard by yard, girded it of my own free will, and of my own free will I wore it. Perhaps they're like the Grinch and their heads aren't screwed on just right. It could be perhaps that their shoes are too tight. Or maybe their hearts are two sizes too small. These cynical holiday spoilers who seem to despise those of us who dare challenge them remind me of what George Bailey told Mr. Potter. The rabble you're talking about. They do most of the working and paying and living and dying in this community. And is it too much to have them work and pay and live and die in two decent rooms and a bath? However, my true sentiment for these people is more like Clark Griswold's for his boss, Mr. Shirley. And I've provided big ribbons for their heads since they come off like cheap, lying, no good, rotten, four flushing, low life, snake licking, dirt eating, inbred, overstuffed, ignorant, blood sucking, dog kissing, brainless, hopeless, heartless, bug eyed, stiff legged, spotty lipped, worm headed sacks of monkey crap. Hallelujah. Others wish to be heard. Again, this is on agenda items that we're voting on tonight. Hello, my name is Emma. Um, I will be speaking on several agenda items, but mostly fiscal um, number four, um, which is the resolution recommending um, approval of providing sponsorship for Art Prize um, through Mobile GR and in the Office of Special Events. Um, now, I mentioned this one specifically because I see things like it very often um, of sponsoring um, amenities and cultural amenities and things that bring business and profit um, are always either um, the bulk of agenda items or the agenda item that has the most money going towards it. And then I see throughout the agenda items, normally maybe one every other time um, that addresses and truly addresses um, true needs of the city, like the unhoused, um, healthcare, things like that. Um, out of this, um, for this week, there are four items um, that may address housing, right? And those are the ones um, that are often in the Brownfield-esque um, things. Um, and even then, you have to really, really look. Um, and often, it doesn't end up being affordable housing. It ends up being something that a middle class person can afford, or it's a new restaurant, or something, again, um, related to business. Um, and now, I am, like a lot of citizens here, pretty angry about the people who came up last week um, to disparage the unhoused. Um, but I've always been angry at people like that. Um, I don't know what kind of heart you can have where panhandling is an annoyance to you. Um, I'm a person who carries a debit card and every time I forget cash, I feel so ashamed that I can't give it out. Cause you, <laughs> that means you have to avoid on eye contact. And the people that would, one of the worst things I think about being on house is people don't want to look at you. They won't look you in the eye because they think you're that much of a nuisance. Um, and to go further than that and say, I want that person out of here. Um, they're bad for my business. <sighs> Um, but again, back to the point of, we wonder why these things are happening. Um, and it is because we are not addressing them with um, the resources we have in the city. It's going to those who already have money. I could, I could speak years about this. I've spoken about it before, um, but the city needs to reconsider its priorities. All right, others wish to be heard. And again, this uh, public hearing is on agenda items that we're voting on tonight. How you doing? I'd like to speak on the resolution of approving a fireworks discharge permit for RMK uh, fireworks. Uh, I work as a stagehand 
for our local stagehand union, IIT26. So I actually spend time doing changeover, setting up the Griffins Arena. So usually when you see those people setting up the ice or you see the Griffins Arena or the net and those things, I actually spend a lot of time at the Van Dando Arena setting that up. So I just hope those people, those uh, people that go to those Griffins games really enjoy that because it's a, uh, we put those together. I spend a lot of time doing that. I spend a lot of time on the weekends. Usually when I like to turn up, I was like, oh, I'm just going to go to work and do changeover because $29 an hour sounds better than partying. But I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And for the record, um, it's DeAndre Jones. Go ahead. Hi. Welcome. Uh, hi, I'm Cass. I live in Belmont, but I've always considered myself a Grand Rapidian. If you live within 15, 20 minutes, I feel, of Grand Rapids, that's where you're from. Uh, I'll be speaking about four and five, kind of the fiscal committee um, and, uh, oh, committee on the whole few things. So I think, as some people have mentioned in terms of where money goes, the money going uh, to people who already have it, uh, and talking about shelter and infrastructure within the city, if the unhoused population is such an issue, we could do what other cities have done and take care of them instead of fining them. If you look at Reno, uh, they've passed a lot of uh, really incredible uh, changes within the city where they've actually taken care of people who have been marginalized and it ends up being cheaper for the city as a whole and that kind of makes me wonder if as a booming medical city we are trying to keep our poor people poor so that we can continue to uh, work on them as students who are coming into the city and want to experiment and I think that that says a lot of bad things about us as a city. While we're talking about it let's talk about the pride we take in being Beer City USA and we don't even encourage hydration why don't we have water fountains on the cities that people are legally allowed to drink on? Um, I, I know that more than a half a million dollars was spent just on the property that was rented for four months last year for people to stay in, but our people are afraid to stay in these places because the people who are there to protect them are the ones who are bringing drugs in and allowing bad things to happen. And I think that as a city, we should care more about the safety of our city members than we do about the the budgets of the of the people who already have money. I think that was very well said. Uh, and then also, if we care about this city, then why don't we have regular trash pickup places? Why don't we have dumpsters at the end of trails that we know people are, are staying at. If we are pushing our people further and further out of the city, we're telling them we have space for them, but it's on the grounds that used to be trash, but now it's got three layers of dirt on top, so it's safe. But it's not actually safe, so we can't you know, put a campground there because this water would be toxic. So we, we recognize that it's a problem. We recognize that it's unsafe, but that's where we put those people, and what does that say? To, to them, what does that say about us? And also, with this 10 seconds left, I would love to see some of this budget get put into mental health care. Because if we had money put into mental health care in this city, then we wouldn't have so many unhoused folks. Thank you. All right. Others wish to be heard on agenda items? My name is Donnie and I live in the third ward. I would like to talk about and discuss uh, the lateral oppression that happens. I mean, with the resources, right? So like you sit up here and you got these, you got these podiums and you're discussing on what, how best, best fit said resources, right? But yet we still come here every fiscal year and yet the 49507 is always forgotten on this paper, right? It's always, it's, it's written on here sometimes, but it's forgotten. What, what, um, what, and I also think that, what, I also think what that item are you I'm getting to? to it if you allow me to finish. Thank what, you. Please let us know. Thank you. What it is. Can I finish? Let us know what agenda item. Huh? Let us know what agenda item. I was looking at it and then for. you interrupted me. Can I finish? Go ahead. Thank you.
So, the fiscal committee number four res resolution recommending the city approval of a providing sponsorship for Art Prize. Um, gonna have to vote no on this. Gonna have to not. Gonna have to vote no. Gonna have to. Gonna have to say that again. The the city resources and what we're spending on needs to ad be adequate to the community rather than building up this city. I feel like the city's been built up enough. I feel like we've I feel like we've done enough, spent enough taxpayer dollars in order for like tourism to come here and people to be able to spend their money and have a good time, right? So like I feel like the conversation now needs to be more directly geared to uh, the community that stays here, whether you're on the north side, northeast side southeast side southwest side whatever whatever side of community whatever side of Grand Rapids you're trying to get needs to be the forefront of these of this situation so that's my that's how I feel about resolution number four um, I also would like to talk about I also would like to talk about uh, number three on the community development um, situation excuse me we're not again repeating myself again i feel like i'm coming up here every week and repeating myself on the same thing how can we provide if we're not providing conflict resolutions then we're not actually doing solutions right if you're providing something if you're sitting down with business owners and and saying hey you have this if issue you need to create now another ordinance come up to us on every come up to us every other tuesday and present your ordinance and then you want to look like the savior as to no nah, this is not good right y'all want to look at it and say this isn't good it's criminalizing unhoused population but what are you actually doing to not criminalize them what are you doing so that they don't have to sit on live on the streets what are you doing so that they don't have to pee or defecate on businesses in front what are you doing that because you can sit there and you can say like well we have four bathrooms but what are four bathrooms to four thousand unhoused population uh, okay. what's four yeah. bathrooms to four thousand people Hang and on. climbing we, we, are, also, we do not have an agenda item related to that issue on the, I have 40 seconds. I have 15 seconds left. I'm also going to address another thing. So if you would not interrupt me, that'd be great. All right. So just to be clear, I know some people came in late. We don't have an item before us tonight on an ordinance related to um, panhandling or sit and lie. So just to be clear about that. Uh, so if you want to be heard on an agenda item that we're voting on, you're welcome to come forward. Um, I was planning to speak on um, agenda item number four and talk about how we can redistribute those funds elsewhere. Um, particularly for the crisis of housing and mental health support in Grand Rapids. The, the fiscal committee for? Yes. Okay. Um, so echoing a previous speaker, um, we can save a lot of money down the line just by investing in these um, housing, affordable housing and shelter developments. Um, before, I'm sorry, ma'am, can you share your name in the city that you live in? Yes, my name's Sophia. I live in 49503. Thank you. Um, and I just want to display how much of an issue the housing crisis is in Grand Rapids. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever been a part of that population or known someone. Um, but the process is incredibly difficult. So um, in calling Mel Trotters six times over multiple hours, there's only an answering machine. Um, in calling 211, they only referred me to a women's only shelter. And, you know, being a woman, Rosalind, Melinda, Sanita, Anita, I hope you could understand why people would choose that, um, but they didn't have any beds available and they weren't even open yet. That's how line, long their line was. 
Um, so what happens when it's 8 p.m., they close their doors and unhoused individuals don't have a place to go? Um, so you could really help that um, by investing in the health and safety of people instead of sponsoring new things for Art Prize. So that's my thoughts that I have for you today. Um, I would love to have more thoughts for you, but I've been incredibly frustrated with how difficult the process is of um, finding information on the Grand Rapids City website and how inaccessible the language is. And I also urge you to be aware of that and make it better. Thank you. All right, thank you. Mark from Grand Rapids. I want to talk about this our probably sponsorship stuff. Again, who's going to get paid? Community's not getting paid. City of Grand Rapids is not getting paid. It's going to be the people who organize it is going to get paid. Not good. If the people who run the new R Prize want sponsorship, they can do it themselves. You know, they can negotiate with businesses and put their money out for the yearly art pageant, as someone said, as someone said a long time ago. Truth of the matter is, I think the art prize is about to be a dinosaur. And if you're not careful, people are not going to come over here in the fall. And you know who's going to suffer? The community's going to suffer. So, there should be a no vote on this. Because one group is going to get all the money and they're not going to distribute it anywhere. That's how it goes. And this is, that's how I feel about it. So please vote no on this. And get back to the drawing board. That. This, that's, a, that's an easy one that should be changed. Get the money. Redistribute it. Don't let the greedy few keep it for themselves. That's the reason why this leadership is where it is today. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mark. All right. Others wish to be heard. We'll take one more comment, and then I'm going to close this public comment period. So I'm Libby from Grand Rapids, and I wasn't planning to speak at all up here, but so many people came up and talked about number four. And some of you might know that I am a real, I dislike mobile GR. I think it has hurt the city of Grand Rapids more than a lot of the other things that you guys have done in the past few years. And we've been seeing these on the agenda for a while. A couple months ago, I think that there was an agenda item to use money to advertise for mobile GR at Griffin's Games. And I'm not really sure what the money is used for here, if it's advertising again for mobile GR. People come downtown and they're going to park where they can park. They're going to park at the facilities that they know and are closest to where they're going. Mobile GR doesn't need to advertise. It doesn't need to 
sponsor anybody. What it needs to do is hire staff. It needs to be operated 24 hours a day because when somebody parks in my driveway that isn't my car, I've got nobody to call at 2 in the morning because there's nobody doing that job. The police are still getting the money for doing that, but nobody's actually doing it. So if we're going to start you know, nickel and diming money through Mobile GR, let it be to hire people to go out and make our city safe and start moving some of these cars. I mean, I live by Wilcox Park, and there's no parking in front of this wide section of it. And when I was a kid, it's because we used to ride our bikes down the handicap ramp and fly into the street. One of these days, a kid is going to get hit because there's all these cars parked and nobody is gonna go ticket them. And it's gonna be on all of your heads because you said, hey, let the police not do that job, let Mobile GR do it, and then you didn't fund or staff it. So let's use the money that way. Let's start making our city safer. Yeah, thanks, Libby. Thanks for those comments. All right, we'll close that public comment period and that will take us to approval of our minutes. Commissioners, these are approval of our minutes from our last session on December 6th. Can I get a motion? Votes. All right, moved and supported. Any questions or comments? Mm -hmm. All right, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, it carries. All right, that will take us to petitions and communications. The first one is a communication from Marilyn Minetti regarding their resignation from the Board of Review. That is referred to our Committee on Appointments. The second one is a communication received from Jacqueline Schmidt re expressing concerns regarding the Spectrum Project located at Cedar and Fuller. That is uh, received and filed. And then a communication received from community leaders and residents requesting action to address health and safety concerns in the community. That is also received and filed. All right, next that will take us to reports of city officers. The first one is a treasurer's report for the period of November 2020, sorry, excuse me, November 22, 2022. It's a lot there. <laughs> through, through November 30, 2022. That is received and filed. Comptroll's report for the period of November 23, 2022 through November 29, 2022 and the amount of $3,720,392.49. That is received and filed. The city clerk submitted the mayor's 2023 standing committees and other commissioner appointments report. That is received and filed. And finally, an add-on to this evening is a city manager report of public safety committee recommendation regarding homeless outreach team staffing. And that is received and filed. And I'm sure, uh, city manager, did you want to speak to that? I know some of us were at the public safety committee meeting today. Thank you, Mayor. Um, that item was um, staffing from the fire department that supported the reassignment from the chief. The chief, the fire chief, has uh, reassigned three people for the past two and a half years and reallocated them from suppression, minimizing the number of firefighters that. Are, author, are able to respond to uh, their primary uh, service of fire suppression. So uh, that recommendation today allows us to have additional resources to backfill those slots once the firefighters are assigned to the homeless outreach team. So the item will go for consideration at uh, the next uh, city commission meeting uh, before the fiscal committee next year. Great, thank you. And commissioners, you all should have a report in your packet related to that. Uh, and as I said, that's received and filed. All right, that will take us to our consent agenda. So our consent agenda are items that we voted on earlier today where there was a unanimous vote. So tonight with one voice vote, we'll adopt those items. Commissioners, can, can I get a motion for the consent agenda? So moved. Four. All right, moved and supported. Any questions or comments? Commissioner? Uh, thank you, Mayor. I just want to point out that this was a revised item from our uh, meeting. Um, I had spoken with you and our, the members of our committee. There were just a couple of ones, uh, individuals who were not going to be reappointed. They were leaving boards. And then I'm going back specifically for our South Town board to just make sure we have all of the seats correct there. So we'll bring that back in January. Great. Thank you. Thanks for pointing that out. Uh, Commissioner? Just a question. I know there was a lot of public comment on fiscal number four. I don't know if any member from the fiscal committee would, or the chair would like to give some response to that? Or, or city manager, go ahead. 
Yeah, as it was explained to us during fiscal committee every year uh, since the inception of our prize, the uh, city has uh, been a partner in our prize, and we've used uh, in kind donations from Mobile GR uh, to support uh, transportation options <coughs> to support our prize. We typically do that uh, in July or August, uh, given the the nature, the changing nature of the event, uh, and you know the the stuff we talked about at our last meeting. Uh, this was uh, doing this earlier in the cycle is in a in you know as a way to help start planning for the future event here. And just for, if I could, Mayor, just for yeah. clarification, there is no independent organization uh, that the funds are going to, um, in terms of the former Art Prize, essentially we are Art Prize now, as Art Prize has gifted that to uh, the community, and it's a collaboration between the city, Kendall College of Art and Design, and downtown Grand Rapids, Inc. So it's our responsibility now to uh, be supportive of it and to help the fundraising to make sure the annual event that brings over a half a million people to our community, uh, that brings the conversations around art as well as the economic impact continues to occur. So that's what this does. Yeah. Thank you, City Manager. As well as having the uh, footprint of the event uh, not only um, in the downtown area, but also, as you've seen the past couple of years, uh, having economic impact within the wards and along the business corridors. Yeah, and City Manager, I'll just add one thing. Uh, in addition to the, the three organizations that City Manager named, the city being one of them, uh, it is a, still a private-public partnership. So there are individuals from the private sector who are also on the board and actively engaged, and uh, will really think through the evolution and the future of Art Prize. And as the city manager said, it's a huge impact economically on our city and supports a lot of our small businesses. Thank so. you for those responses. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. All right, commissioners, any other questions or comments? All right, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, it carries. All right, that will take us to ordinances to be adopted, and we have one ordinance before us tonight. Our ordinance tonight is Ordinance Amending Section 1 of the Budget Ordinance 2022-13 for Fiscal Year 2023, Amendment Number 9. So moved. Support. Support. All right, moved and supported. Commissioner O'Connor, uh, Chair of our Fiscal Committee, you want to tell us about this item? Yes, thank you, Mayor. First two items are related to our Fire Department. Item 1 is uh, a SAFER grant uh, from FEMA. Uh, for $2.8 million, which will allow us to add eight additional firefighter positions to our roster. Uh, item two is uh, hiring of 11 recent firefighter uh, training recruits. Uh, item three is uh, the addition of one latent print technician. It's a position we already have in our department. Uh, there is a, a pretty hefty amount of training involved with that position. Uh, and so this is to add on someone to be trained in the event uh, that there is a uh, retirement pending in the future for uh, an existing position. At that point in time, the, the second position will be eliminated. Uh, Three is just recognizing an Office of Highway Safety grant, which is administered, administered by the City of Wyoming uh, for traffic enforcement. Uh, item five is uh, some uh, funds for uh, MDNR passport recreation grants for both Roberto Clemente Park and uh, the improvements which are happening at Veterans Memorial Park, uh, which we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Uh, six is uh, where you're going to utilize about $200,000 of ARPA funds to add Wi-Fi, uh, publicly available Wi-Fi in our parks. Uh, seven is uh, ARPA funded innovation pilot for urban wood utilization. Uh, item eight uh, is some asset management stuff for our public library partners. And uh, item nine is the $150,000 city sponsorship of our prize. All right, thank you. Uh, commissioners, any questions or comments? All right, this is a roll call vote tonight. Commissioner Lanier. Aye. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner O'Connor. Yes. Commissioner Moody. Yes. Commissioner Asasi. Yes. Commissioner Ruppart. Yes. Mayor Bliss. Yes, it carries. And commissioners, can I get a motion to give this immediate effect? To move. Support. Support. All right, moved and supported. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? It carries. All right, uh, commissioners, we don't have any resolutions before us tonight or scheduled public hearing, so that will take us to our last opportunity for public comment tonight. Uh, again, we ask that you come to the podium, that you share your name, and you'll be given up to three minutes to speak. <laughs> Hi. Hi. My name is Jacqueline Schmidt. I know that you all received a letter from me this week and a yellow paper. Um, I'm here to talk about the Spectrum Project at Fuller and Cedar. My house is on Benjamin. It's directly behind that property. And uh, I never received a letter stating what they were going to do, that that was going to be a construction site, that anything was going on. And I'm, the, I'm not the only one in my neighborhood because I've talked to my neighbors about it. 
Um, my concern is that they start at 5.30 in the morning. Um, their lights are in my eyes because my bedroom faces that fuller, you know, back area. And I have a sliding glass door. 5.30 in the morning, the lights are on, the trucks are going. Um, Cedar was closed off for many, many months while they were trying to figure out how they're going to park the equipment at, on that corner lot. So every morning I'd wake up and there'd be semis and dump trucks and um, trailers with heavy equipment all up and down Benjamin Street. I'm not sure if anybody understands that that is a neighborhood, okay? The one street that Benjamin is on is, it's one big block. If you're not familiar, I'm 49503. It's one big block. Spectrum should have bought the whole block, and then maybe the, we wouldn't all be affected by it. I don't know what the answer is, but all I know is my house shakes every day, every day, like an earthquake. I've had pictures fall off my walls, you know? I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Now, I do not have a privacy fence in my backyard because I enjoyed my wooded area. I used to watch the deer come. I'd watch the turkeys, everything. Mayor Bliss and I worked on it before when they were putting the parking lot in. And I appreciate that you responded to my letter, Mayor Bliss, with a handwritten letter. But as you know, in the past, the, commission, the planning commission, when I went before them, they... I went, I spoke, they tabled it to the following month, and when the following month came and I walked into the meeting, it was already decided and voted on, they were putting that parking lot there anyways. So the planning commission to me did no good, okay? Now my biggest concern is, I've been in my home 28 years, my home is a completely finished three level home. My basement is carpeted, I've got bedroom, I've got family room, everything. I want to know if you're going to bring in some type of or engineering firm, or architectural firm, to let me know that my foundation is not ruined by all of this that's going on. I, I put that on all of you because this is my home. This is my neighborhood. This is where I've been, where I've raised my children. And it is it is awful crazy, awful crazy. So I hope that somebody looks into it. I've I, Mayor Bliss emailed me. She emailed me the blueprints. I don't know where the fence is exactly or how high that privacy fence is going to be. I just want to make sure when those lights are on in that new parking lot with that new building, they're not shining in my back, into my back of my home. I want to make sure when they're plowing and that salt's going, it's not going into my garden that I've had for 28 years of my home. I mean, this is a this is not a good good project for our neighborhood, you know, and I just want to make sure, look into all of it and let us know. Let me know, is my foundation, because if there's anything wrong, I will be coming, you know, out. I want to make sure. So thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you, Jackie. Okay. All right, others wish to be heard? How you doing, everybody? Last time, city commission, I was dancing. I seen this girl. She was like... Start with your name. How you doing, everybody? My name is DeAndre Jones. Last city commission meeting, I seen in the comments, this girl's like, why is he dancing? It's because I can dance. And if you ever seen the uh, city commission meeting, the first city commission meeting, some of the commissioners can't dance. I ain't going to lie to you. Some of y'all need some rhythm. Some of y'all need some rhythm for sure, man, for sure, for sure. Well, I mean, but I just, I'm just confident, you know what I'm saying? And I like to dance. But uh, first of all, I'd just like to say um, this is the last city commission meeting of the year. I'm really going to miss Kurt. I feel like I served a term with y'all because I've been coming here for four years. And I've been into a lot of city commission meetings. Like, I've probably been here as much as the commissioners have. And uh, I really just enjoy being able to learn from each and every one of you. I've learned a lot from all of you. Uh, Commissioner Lanier, I'm going to miss you. I appreciate everything that you've done, uh, giving me opportunities to play basketball with you, engage with the community. Uh, Mayor Bliss, a, a young woman that was grew up in a wheelchair and then became the the mayor of a city. I mean, I know you never could imagine being able to walk one day and be able to do the things you do. And I hope you still, as a young woman, that you keep that passion that you have because I'm, I'm very passionate too. And that story still inspires me. And I still remember your story to this day. I mean, a city attorney, I appreciate you always letting me know that I'm important and letting me feel that I'm welcome and that I belong here. City, city manager, I appreciate you just being able to just continuously boosting my confidence. Even though I'm confident, it feels good to have your city officials and people that run your city be able to tell you that you're doing good work and to recognize you. John O'Connor, I'd like to have a drink with you one day at your establishment. I think that'd be pretty cool just to talk about your experiences. Uh, Joe. Got the same last name as me, but I'm gonna miss seeing you as a as a, a, a black commissioner, being able just to see you hear your voice and be a strong voice for the black community and just um saying things that when people aren't comfortable saying it on the commission, you were that person that uh, us black people needed to hear, and I really appreciate that, Nathaniel. I really appreciate you always being able to 
being able to offer me rides, you will offer me rides, you will ask me, am I okay? You will see me walking. Sometimes you'll be like, hey, do you need a ride? And that really means a lot to me. I had a car, but sometimes I got to walk to the city commission because I like to think of my feet. And sometimes we don't appreciate the things like a car or a house and things like that. So I just like to be able to walk around sometimes. And I really appreciate that. And Commissioner Yasasi, I stay on the west side. I see those posters of your cousin. And I'm very sorry for that. And I hope that your family is staying strong because I, I lost a cousin to a police shooting. And I'm optimistic. Optimistic, and I believe there are great police officers in the United States and there are great departments, but I still feel that there are bad police officers that make police departments look bad. Um, I really hope that everybody in this room truly enjoys their uh, the, West, the rest of this um, year because it's going to be a crazy year next year. And um, I hope you guys stay strong through the good, through the bad, through the tragedies. Um, we are our city. We all want a line for the same things. And I hope you guys have a good night. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. All right, others wish to be heard? I'm so glad that he warmed you up. <laughs> I didn't plan that. I had nothing to do with it. Hey, don't start that clock yet. I haven't introduced oh, myself. You're talking. <clears throat> Lucas, first ward. Twas the meeting before Christmas. And all across the bench, leaders are wondering if I'll be a Grinch. Some have great hope and others despair, knowing new members soon would be there. With GRPD's year of shootings in heads, we so often came here angry, seeing red. Though the rich in GR have a compassion gap, I'll take a break from my rantings and be a big sap. Before the holiday rush causes us all to scatter, lost my place, because that's me. <laughs> Let's take a moment for more agreeable matters. I'm famous at this point for Wisdoms of Nash, but I don't just use my southern yap to bash. Kurt, Sunita, and our well-dressed man, Joe, I'll take some time to say thanks before you go. Despite sometimes lacking the guts to be clear, you all were pushed to be better by those who came here. Next month, we re-engage the political game and welcome a new roster with new names. Now newcomers, Purdue and Robbins and Knight, on Moody Asazi and O'Connor's Spite. From the top of the agenda to the last gavel falls, or recess allows you to dash away all, you'll see many of us regulars raising the roof, and I'll try to still lighten things up with a goof. See, it's my hope to see progressiveness grow, even if we have to walk here through snow. Though campaign donors and churches are stuck in your heads, stand up to them. Courage will cure your dread. Me, I don't like having to be the big jerk. But when government is lacking, LL goes to work. I hope you see that by writing this prose, I see that we don't always have to live as foes. So, for a couple weeks, my emails and words will be out of sight. And for now, despite our disputes, I wish you all a good night. Thank you, Lucas. All right, others wish to be heard? My name is Joyce Gibson, and I've come here about abortions. Now, um, I'm trying to be passionate, but um, this Planned Parenthood is being purposely planted in minority communities and as if pop population control. People are exterminating the minorities that's Afro-Americans and Hispanic descent Americans as if we were roaches or ants or, or termites. There's got to be some kind of resolution or end to this. Um, I won't, I'm not going to take the whole three minutes. I'm just going to take a little bit of your time. But I'm, this issue must come to an end. The woman who started Planned Parenthood, she once sat with Hitler. And she said that she would rather see all of those ends exterminated before they grow. And this is what I'm here about. I want something to be done. I want to be brought to the head of Planned Parenthood and abortions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Good evening. I'm Jacob Dorn. I live in Kentwood, Michigan. <clears throat> I'm an independent living specialist focused on housing at Disability Advocates of Kent County. 
I want to express my concerns about the proposed language and the request for action to improve health and public safety, or safety in public spaces. Disability Advocates of Kent County is a center for independent living that serves several counties in West Michigan. <laughs> Centers for Independent Living are consumer-controlled, nonprofit organizations that work with people living with disabilities to live as independently as possible. I want to recognize that this request points to a real problem with homelessness in Grand Rapids. I would argue that the problem has to do with the lack of truly affordable and accessible housing in the city due to reluctance to address systematic shortcomings in the housing sector, not with the unhoused. At Disability Advocates, we believe that this proposal has serious potential to disproportionately impact and further marginalize people living with disabilities. As the housing specialist at Specialist at Disability Advocates, many of the people I work with are homeless individuals or people who are facing homelessness. A significant portion of these people are in these situations in part because of their disabilities. From the perspective of disability, I have two central concerns with this proposal. The first concern is that people with both physical and mental health conditions are disproportionately represented in the unhoused population. On top of the financial and physical barriers to housing, people living with disabilities have the highest rate of reported housing discrimination of all protected classes, according to the data from the Fair Housing Center of West Michigan. In 2021, over 50% of the Fair Housing Center's cases centered on discrimination based on disability. This is only one example of the factors contributing to the fact that people living with disabilities are more likely to find themselves without a home. This makes disability a vital part of this conversation and these concerns must be considered in any decision making re regarding this issue. The second concern is the request to quote, prohibit sitting, <clears throat> sitting or lying in specific public spaces if there is adequate shelter space available to those in need. While I think this provision was made with good intentions, it will create a hostile environment for those living with disabilities in our city. The shelters in Grand Rapids are simply not accessible. Some claim to be low access or low barrier but fail to provide the necessary accommodations for people with disabilities. Many people cannot access the beds that are available, and in many cases, adequate shelter space does not exist at all. If an ordinance based on this topic is to be created, the voices of the unhoused and those who work with the unhoused must be included in the process. This is necessary to reach the stated goals of showing compassion and not criminalizing homelessness. Disability Advocates of Kent County is willing to help, however, we can to ensure that the voices of the people living with disabilities are heard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob. All right, others wish to be heard? Hi, welcome. Buju, Gitigan, Gunsque, Indijnakaz, Howard City, Indunjaba, Mayang, Indodam. Hello, my name's Jade, and I'm 15. That was my introduction in Anishinaabe Moen. And with that, I want to say, you are here on stolen land. And this land belongs to the Anishinaabek people. My mom and I work, my, my mom and I work and serve the unhoused community, collecting tents, tarps, propane heaters, and sleeping bags. We also provide harm reduction supplies and feed more than 150 people each week on Love Mondays. I also want to start out by saying, that I am absolutely disgusted that the Chamber of Commerce would propose an ordinance that would criminalize homelessness and that this commission would ever consider adopting it. This ordinance would make it illegal to sit, stand, lean, kneel, or lay down, and make it illegal to go within 150 feet of any business, intersection, public bathroom, bus stops, and ATMs. Let me ask you this. How would you walk down the street and stay 150 feet away from businesses? Even if the buildings were 300 feet apart, which they're not, you'd have to walk down the center of the road to not be within the 150 feet. This ordinance affects poor people and contributes to the systematic racism in this city as it disproportionately affects people of color. You are criminalizing being poor. Shame on you for even considering it. Additionally, one of the complaints listed was people going to the bathroom in public. But if you're going to make being within 150 feet of any public restroom illegal, where are they supposed to go? 
Let me remind you and everyone here that might not know, the DPW locks the bathrooms at Heartside and other locations around the city during the winter. So you guys are the creators of your own problems. It is absurd that you think you, it is okay to lock up restrooms and then complain when people make alternative plans to relieve themselves. And since you've limited free speech in this building in the past by shutting down meetings for people using bad words, and because I want my fellow community members to have a chance to speak, I will say that the feces is on your hands and not anyone else's. All right, thank you. Others wish to be heard? My name is Kristen Green and I live in Howard City, but I work here in Grand Rapids with our unhoused neighbors. I work in the city to secure winter gear, tents, tarps, and propane heaters for our unhoused community members. I provide harm reduction supplies to our unhoused communities, and I also sit on the planning committee for the MDHHS Harm Reduction uh, Viral Hepatitis Summit. Excuse me. I know this board values experts over regular folks, so I hope that that's what you need in order to listen to me tonight. Considering criminalizing poverty and jailing the unhoused is the lowest of the low behavior in a city that thinks of itself as being welcoming. This city has a torrid history of missteps when attempting to help the unhoused, and so I am worried about this proposed ordinance. It was you, Mayor Bliss, that, excuse me, that I called many times just two years ago asking you to intervene in the eviction of the unhoused community and destruction of their property by GRPD at Heartside. I will remind you that you and everyone else on this board were out of the office and on vacation during this forced removal only two days before Christmas. Surely somewhere warm as I saw none of you downtown helping. Even your hot team was on vacation. It is that Christmas spirit that all of you once again are thinking about how you can muck up the lives of others so you don't have to be reminded of your failings and greed so close to the holidays. How thoughtful. Other towns are doing the right thing. Muskegon is allowing for smaller square foot dwellings, so tiny homes and studio apartments are options. Detroit has made tiny home spaces with wraparound care and case managers to support those who are unhoused. But here you are considering ordinances that will criminalize homelessness and jail those impacted by it. While you are at it, maybe you want to build a debtor's prison, giving the city that old time feel you all yearn for. What is pro proposed here is disgusting. Mel Trotter, shame on you, the city, and the Grand Rapids Chamber of Commerce. You could have come out with a statement that said the following businesses are committed to ending homelessness and have agreed to donate at least 1% of their profits to making a difference in the lives of the displaced and less fortunate. But instead, you came out with fine and jail the unhoused. They are bad for business. The board To the board, do the right thing and reject the and reject considering the this proposal mayor bliss i'd love a handwritten letter from you in response thank you Thanks. all right others wish beer buju josh kobanesi clan indigenous cause howard city and Dujaba. my name is georgia i'm 13. i also work with our unhoused neighbors downtown I'm here today to point out some obvious facts. You, who have means and money, don't want to see unhoused people because it might remind you that they are human beings too. You don't want to be reminded of your lack of humanity, of your refusal to act when it's well within your ability and means. How can you sit in one of these big fancy apartments or in one of your fancy housing developments and do nothing with the thousands your board possesses while your fellow humans fight to survive the cold? I do not know. How is it that you can spend thousands of dollars to keep the rich elite in this city happy with their ice skating rink being constantly renovated when those thousands could be put toward housing for those less privileged than you? I have absolutely no idea. This city is beginning to get a very bad reputation, not because of homelessness, but because of your apathy. You have an overly funded department of racism that shows its indifference on good dais, violence on others. 
towards the suffering of its community, which I've witnessed firsthand. And now, and now you want to criminalize communities that can't afford to live in condos built for the rich elite. I am absolutely horrified that this board would even consider an ordinance such as this one. And no business in this city is to think that they are innocent when it comes to this ordinance, as they have clearly not come forward to show their disapproval. If you choose to stay neutral in times of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressors. And if you do not act now, we will never forgive you. Leaning should not be illegal. Boycott Grand Rapids Downtown District. All right, others wish to be heard. My name is Emma. Um, I just want to commend um, those two young citizens who came up to speak. I hope everybody on this board heard every single word. What they said was perfect. Um, so I was, oh, to uh, Commissioner Repart, um, I just wanted to say that I appreciated our conversation um, at the Neighborhood Summit. Um, while I am angry um, as this with this commission as a whole um, and disappointed, I'm, um, I do want to say I appreciated that and especially your last comments. Um, I will say that while I get a lot of sarcastic faces and angry faces, your face is always one that you I can tell you're taking in my words um, and I will miss that. Um, and I wanted to also say that it's okay to be angry, um, that you should feel ashamed, you should be, um, feel not necessarily ashamed, but should be taking in the words um, like Kurt was, um, where often, again, I get these faces that say, I'm tired, I don't want to listen to this person yell at me anymore, right? Um, and I get it. I don't like to be yelled at either, right? But when we have told you time and time and again about these issues, like what we're saying is not new at all, and by any means. Um, it, gets, it gets quite frustrating. And we are the people here that we have to house this anger in our hearts and project it to you because there are many people um, who don't have the resources to come up here or frankly are too afraid. Um, when we just had one of our comrades come out of jail because she spoke so, so passionately and worked so hard for her community. Um, every single person here speaking for the community is risking a lot. This is why I only say my first name. Um, I've, I've worked in the community. I've, I've, I want to dedicate my whole life to the community. That's why I got the degree I have. That's why I'm in um, case management and eventually um, social work, right? Um, but I don't feel comfortable saying any of the places I'm employed at. <laughs> you, you don't, like I've said this before, you don't like being yelled at. I don't like having my dreams threatened for, for caring for the community, right? And I think I should be able to speak strongly about that. Um, I don't, I don't know if these words are doing anything anymore. Um, oh, last thing about the art prize. Um, we know what we were talking about. We know what art prize is. <laughs> you don't have to explain it to us. <laughs> All right, others wish to be heard. My name is Matt. I live in the third ward. And it is my hope that the city officials in this building will take the ordinances requested by the Chamber of Commerce last week and tear it up and never again hear anything like it. Because all it does is criminalize homeless. Now you might be thinking, but Matt, it says right here, what will these ordinances not do? Criminalize homelessness. <laughs> but you can say that all you want, but if, but if you're requesting that the city regulate where homeless people can sit, lay, kneel, just exist in public spaces, and if you essentially make it illegal for them to just ask their neighbors for help, I am gonna need someone to explain to me like I am eight years old how that is not criminalizing homelessness. 
Now, another thing that this says is that these ordinances should be combined with efforts to increase the supply of affordable housing, provide mental health support, and improve service provider outcomes. This is, that said a lot in the, in the letter, and that sounds good, but what strikes me is that there are no specific like calls to do this in this letter. There, for whatever reason, the writers of this letter did not think, did not take the time to think of actual solutions to these problems. They did not think of ways to provide additional housing, provide additional mental health care. They didn't do anything, but what they did include are the penalties for not following these regulations, which include fines that can get up to, that can be hundreds of dollars and jail time. I mean, it sounds like y'all just want to use this as an excuse to let GRPD arrest the homeless. Now, I'm personally not a church going man, but I know that Mel Trotter Ministries, both their leaders, were among the names who signed that letter. And I would, and I would wager that there are quite a number of names on that list who will show up to the pews every Sunday. So I thought it would be fun to give them a little preview of what their Messiah will say to them when their time comes. Then the king will turn to those to the left and say, Away with you, you cursed ones, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and demons. For I was hungry, and you did not feed me. I was thirsty, and you did not give me a drink. I was a stranger, and you didn't invite me into your home. I was naked, and you didn't give me clothing. I was sick and in prison, and you didn't visit Thank me. Thank you. Thanks. Your time's up. Thanks. And then they will reply. All right. Your, your time's up. Your time's up. Sir, your, your time is up. Matt, your time is up. You need to sit down. The least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were refusing to help me. By the way, that's Matthew 25. All right. Others who wish to be heard? My name is Donnie. I live in the third ward. I'm here to, first and foremost, make these meetings more, uh, I would like to express and exercise um, of the message of making these meetings more accessible. Um, you're trying to make them more accessible by, by changing the times and an inaccessible time to people. That's not going to happen. People can't get here at 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the evening. Uh, they can barely make it here. Um, so again, one thing that could be uh, of use to everybody else uh, is to make it so that people can call in. Uh, making, bringing the phones back, I know that's very simple. Probably wouldn't even cost you anything but your time. Uh, but I can tell you're very stingy with that. So again, Make, make these meetings more accessible by having people being able to call in. If you care about the community, that shows that you care, that you're, that you're listening to them. Second, it's disgusting that the, ch the, the, the chambers <clears throat> has adopted this ordinance or is even considering the ordinance, right? Is even considering this. We're, it's disgusting that we are criminalizing or we're, we're, we're putting more recommendations rather than conflict resolutions, as I had talked about earlier. If we're not able, if we're not exhausting ourselves by by collecting the funds enough to be able to say, here, is this going to help you move forward? Here, is this going to help you getting to a house? Here, is this going to help you get more food? Here, is this going to help you not pee or, 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 or defecate anywhere? If we're not exhausting ourselves doing that, instead, the city exhausts themselves on anti-homeless structures, as we talked about earlier. So because you can't control on what people's mannerisms are and where they can or where they can stand, sit or lay or lean, you want to be able to criminalize them in a way of, no, you can't set up your tent here. And that is the repetitive lateral oppression and marginalization of our in-house population, and not just of our house population, of a community in, in general here. Since we're talking about misuse of city resources, it's a constant factor that the that city officials are misusing the city resources, right? I mean, come on now, right? Mayor Bliss, I see you downtown. I see you downtown. How come? How come? 
the young gentleman who comes up here and talks about abortions can see you downtown, talk about it, say y'all had a good interaction and everything. I can talk to you downtown, talk, ask you about budgeting, record the whole thing live, and then after I get off my live, get arrested. You can me. I have trial on the 15th, and you can't even look me in the face, Mayor Bliss. You can me. The only person up here with the ability to care me, and you did it. Why? Because that's how lateral oppression works here in the city, and you don't care enough to not, to not know the repercussions of what your caring attitude does. I'll see you in court on the 15th. Justice for Patrick. All right. Others who wish to be heard? Please refrain from clapping. Drop the charges. Others who wish to be heard? Drop the charges of after this. Drop the charges of back defense. Others who wish to be heard, or I'm going to close this public comment period. Good evening. My name is Deja Tillman of Grand Rapids, Ward 3. I'm a legal fellow with the ACLU of Michigan and offer this statement on behalf of the organization in opposition to the proposed Chamber's ordinance. We at the ACLU of Michigan are deeply concerned with the Chamber's proposed ordinances, which specifically target people asking for help and who do not have housing. While these ordinances claim to not criminalize homelessness or panhandling, there's virtually no way to enforce such restrictions without doing just that. On the one hand, it makes criminal it makes criminal, criminals, excuse me, of our neighbors down on hard times and in need of charity. And on the other hand, bans the public from using public spaces unless they're a paying customer or experiencing some medical emergency. In essence, these ordinances would criminalize acts that are not only constitutionally protected, but deeply human. The need to sit, lie down, or kneel are functions every single one of us experiences every day. And to that end, the scope of the proposed ordinances far exceeds the behavior targeted in the proposal. For instance, a jogger who has no intention of patronizing any of the businesses may stop in the public right away to take a seat or a breath. That would become illegal under these ordinances. The same would be true for a teenager who, instead of helping his mom shop in the store, chooses to wait outside. These proposals, these proposals imply that he can't. Imagine an elderly woman who uses a cane that needs to take a seat downtown after a short walk. This ordinance would require she have a quote unquote medically confirmable disability to prevent prosecution. Basically a doctor's note just to sit. What about the young woman waiting for a friend or Uber to pick her up? Unless she's waiting for the bus, this ordinance designates she cannot wait in the public right away. At the end of the day, people, all people, are beholden to their natural bodily functions. This includes the need to sit down, sometimes outside. The idea that people are committing a crime when they lie on the ground because there's nowhere else to sleep or when they ask their more fortunate neighbors for resources flies in the face of both legal jurisprudence and morality. For some, witnessing people who experience housing insecurity resort to sleeping outside is deeply uncomfortable because it's a painful reminder of the poverty and inequality in our city every time we come face to face with the neediest people in our society. But sweeping these problems under the rug does not make them go away. It's not a crime to be poor, it's not a crime to ask for charity, and it is not a crime to have nowhere else to go. Instead, these are issues for which we need critical and targeted solutions. The proposed ordinances are neither. At this point, we acknowledge and appreciate that there is currently no plan to adopt these ordinances, and we emphasize the need for true community input, including from those who are most likely to be impacted, and from ex experts in housing, in addition to taking feedback from our residents. Before moving forward, it is necessary and incumbent on this group to continue to provide a meaningful space and time for residents and community members to engage in this discussion and analysis. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right, others wish to be heard? Mark from Grand Rapids. Remove J. Edgar Hoover's name from the FBI building. Remove George Wallace's name from the Tunnel of Mobile, Alabama. Justice for Patrick DeOya. And Brittany Griner is now free and back home. <laughs> now as for this supposed homeless criminalization or ordinance, I have one thing to say about that. <laughs> now, I would like to address my comment to the outgoing commissioners. Commissioner Repper, who's who has now taken a break. <laughs> I can thank you for your service. You know, I know you got railroaded by the commissioner elect who's going to be taking your seat, and I hope you do well in your future endeavors. Commissioner Lanier, your 
Public Service is impeccable. First with the Grand Rapids Public Schools, and here with the City Commission. Your service, your integrity, and your leadership will be sorely missed unless you can come back here and run for the next mayor. Commissioner Jones, your work for the Urban League is outstanding. Your work here in this commission was outstanding. Your integrity, your aplomb, and your Tennessee De Qua was greatly appreciated here, and your leadership will be sorely missed. And I would like to meet the new members who will take, the, take your seats. And after that, it'll be back to business as usual. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. All right, others wish to be heard? Hi, Russ. Uh, Russell Olmstead, West Side, First Ward, Grand Rapids. Uh, the first city commission meeting that I came to was, was back in 2016, I believe. It had to do with the, uh, um, the decision to uh, get assault rifles into uh, the cars, uh, police officers' cars, um, and without uh, public engagement around that. And it also was the first time that I ever was able to engage with elected officials at a local level. And that was with you, Commissioner Lanier, and uh, former Con Commissioner Kelly, in reaching out to you to ask you questions about how this was introduced, who introduced it. And that started a whole rabbit hole of interaction with uh, around city commission uh, politics, wanting to show up to every meeting I could to understand how this works, how our local bureaucracy works. And along the way, Kurt, Commissioner Lanier, Commissioner Jones, many others as well, um, but I'm highlighting you for specific reasons. Uh, you were always open to engaging, uh, pressing back, um, showing where the gaps are, pointing in directions where uh, community members can help from the outside. Um, you, you exhibited leadership of, uh, I, there, there are different forms of leadership. And so the one that, that you exhibited is one that I'm trying to learn more about, which is, which is not, not uh, man, words. Uh, and, not taking control, but allowing people to find their own pathway into that. And I respect that a great deal. Um, I am excited for Purdue for you. I, I am, uh, and a supporter of Kelsey, so I'm excited for her. But it's going to be uh, a shame to see your leadership uh, go, Commissioner Lanier. Uh, Commissioner Jones, yours as well. Um, a mad amount of respect for you and your empathetic leadership um, and your compassion. Uh, and Commissioner Kurt Rappart, um, I consider you a friend. I consider you uh, a leader that I look to uh, learn so much from and uh, uh, try to uh, emulate your, your style of leadership and compassion. Uh, you're always there. You're always, you're always trying to press against the system, um, and you always have. And I know whatever happens when you leave this after tonight, that you're going to continue that work, and you're going to continue doing what you did before this, which is helping the people who have always needed uh, to, to have someone who can advocate for them in the spaces where they might not have access to and where you have power in. And um, thank you for that. I'll miss you up here. I'll miss your leadership. Commissioner Lanier, I'll miss your leadership as well. And of course, yours as well, Commissioner Jones. Um, and thank you all for the service that you've done for our community, even when we have differed on our opinions. Thank so you. Thank you. Thank you, Russ. All right. Others wish to be heard? Hi. Uh, Cass from... Grand Rapids area. Uh, 
echoing what others have said tonight, nobody wants to go to the bathroom in a doorway. So just to bring up a few other solutions, potential options for our unhoused community. Um, bathrooms, I know the last time I had to uh, rent Heartside Park because I wanted to provide resources for the unhoused community, I paid $375 for this rental fee and the bathrooms didn't have doors like I couldn't go to the bathroom in private so I paid $300 for a park to feed and clothe the unhoused community and they didn't have bathroom doors so regardless of if it's summertime they can even get in there they should have doors um, it would be awesome if we could provide lockers or someplace safe that people could put their things so that they don't have to carry around 15 bags. If they didn't have to carry around all of their stuff with them all of the time, maybe they wouldn't be targeted and criminalized by our community police officers. Speaking of police officers, I would love to see some of the money that they make stay in the community. How many of our police officers are driving out to Hudsonville and Door and Rockford? Why doesn't their money stay in the, in the community? You have to live in the community that you are a ward for, yeah? A commissioner for? Why is that not true for our city's officers? Um, speaking of officers, let's talk about the, the fire chief. They're like, hey, give us our fire officers back. And the unhoused community is like, hey, stop sending people that don't actually help us. Um, what is the HOT team doing? Yes, they're checking on people, but are they providing resources? Are they building a trust with the community? Speaking of building a trust, has Network 180 ever actually built a trust for people who they are trying to serve? Um, I would love to see members who work in social work and in the health field being a part of this team. What about community members who are out there serving our marginalized populations? Why are they not part of the HOT team? Um, I, I want to, you know, we're Beer City. Uh, USA, also Queer City USA. I love that Grand Rapids is a safe haven for queer folks all across all across Michigan. Like people people move here because this is a safe haven for LGBTQ members, and yet our only uh, our only center that has a, a trans unit has eight beds in it. Uh, and again, that's. 4,000 people, how many of these people are flagging to the city because they've been outcast by their families, they've been outcast by their communities, they come here seeking community because that's what we're known for and we can't provide it. Like what is community to you? That's what I would ask you all to look on. Um, I would love to talk about transitional housing. What are these housing options? I know that other cities are working on this. I know but your time's up, thanks. All right, others wish to be heard. Casey from the third ward. I'm a make it make sense kind of person. So let's make it se make sense here. I agree that feces, et cetera, is a health hazard. So let's talk about the, effect is, the effectiveness of your plan. The poor gets fined, the poor gets arrested, resulting in more fines, legal charges, court obligations, etc. The aftermath of which includes making it even more difficult for them to get a job, rent a house, gain financially, etc. So they end up back on the street where, they are, where they're required to stay X amount of feet away from public bathrooms. Logically, the only benefit from, the, from your I'll show them approach is money being profited into the system, one unhoused person and a handful of days at a time. You can't force someone out of poverty. Critically thinking, it tells us that we would simply need access to more public restrooms. One designated down at Heartside and one that's open at Rosa Park part-time isn't meeting the demand. Devil's Advocate would say that's enabling, but they're already doing what they do regardless without resources or a designated area to be. Have you ever seen that South Park episode about the unhoused, the panhandlers, right? They're coming and they're like, change, change. And the people are getting, like, it's getting out of hand. They're everywhere they go, right? And so you know what they do? They try everything. They try all kinds of things. And then eventually they figure out if you just take the change and you just put it right there, guess where they go? Same logic for housing, bathrooms, et cetera. W what do you think a 24-hour open bathroom would do? Ex an, an accessible one that's not down at Heartside. Maybe, what if you throw two or three of them together? What do you think would happen? What do you think? It's a metaphor, but make it make sense and build some bathrooms. 
Uh, I was, and um, Moody, I was wondering you specifically, you have a church, right? You have a funeral home. Who are you housing? What unhoused people are you specifically putting up in your church? What have you, are you opening those doors? Because last time I seen just like a big giant fence because you're getting a new parking lot with your money, right? Cool, awesome. Uh, I went to the shelter once. I had to stand in line. There wasn't enough rooms. If there was enough rooms, I had to go through a metal detector, get stripped of everything I owned. My child couldn't have her blanket, which was her comfort object, because that's not allowed in. Um, we weren't allowed to talk to anyone outside. We, we, I could not have my kids spend the night anywhere else. They had to stay with me every single night, regardless if it was their dad's night, etc. cetera. Um, uh, I had to put all my personal belongings in a blue V, in a blue UV light so it could get scanned for, for uh, germs, right? But the next morning that went missing. So then my keys were gone. My license was gone. Everything was gone. I filed a report against them. I, mysteriously, my stuff was found and I never went back. I wasn't addicted. I just got divorced. All right. Others wish to be heard. Again, my name is Libby. I still live in Easttown. Um, first of all, I just want to say my hope is that this proposal for this ordinance, I'm hoping that it's not anything that any of you came up with with the GR chamber. I mean, I expect terrible behavior from them. I mean, I, the, the organization is not a good one. It doesn't represent our city, in all honesty. I would also hope that you wouldn't even consider it. I mean, we've been down this road before where we made panhandling illegal, and how much did that cost the city? I mean, how, really, honestly, I, I didn't look it up. I'm, I'm hoping maybe the city attorney knows, but I would hope you wouldn't even consider it. I mean, we had somebody here from the ACLU tonight to say, you know, this is going to be illegal. We're going to come back to you guys again and say, this is no bueno. Um, I watched last week's meeting on the internet. And um, I wasn't really sure how to react to the people that were here speaking for this um, proposal. Um, it takes a, a comedic audacity to be as obscenely rich as some of those men are and to come here and complain about homelessness. They came here pretending that the policies that you have given them they're not part of the problem. I mean, some of the names on that list, they own half of downtown. If they really wanted to compassionately deal with the homeless here, they have the means to do it. But they want you guys to do it. They want the city to do it. They don't want to spend their money. Um, the city has been engaged in this policy for over 20 years. The homelessness is growing here. It's not getting better. It's getting worse. I went to Grand Rapids Christian High, and um, today, or the other day, I was driving by, you know, the Alger Curve onto Plymouth. There are homeless living there now. They are all over the city. They were not all over the city 20 years ago. The policies of paying wealthy people to come in and benevolently build us apartment complexes with money that we give them and we give them money to clean up the land and we forgive taxes for 20 years isn't working. We're not getting housing for people that need housing. We're just not. We're getting criminals. And the other thing I want to point out, I think somebody said it last week, all of the things that they're arguing about are already criminalized. You're not allowed to defecate on the street. You can't trespass into people's property. You aren't allowed to assault people. So creating another law doesn't actually solve the problem. We need real solutions. It, we didn't get here overnight. It took us 20 years to get here. It's going to take us a long time to get out of it. It's going to take actual work, and it's going to take the money that you guys like to give to the people that were born with, you know, I mean, the the, the heir of the Gerber family was here last week, last week complaining thank, about thank money. You. So, thank you. Your time's up. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Others wish to be heard? Hello. Brandon Bilski, second ward. Uh, also, the land of the three fires, the Odawa, Ojibwe, and Potawatomi. And the names that we we have are, are powerful, but in, in Taoism, something that I am very versed with and, and follow spiritually, uh, when you name something, you kill it. Because you name it and you take away its potential to grow. 
and you have a defined parameters of your position and in that parameter you have taken away your ability to grow. Grand Rapids as a governing body needs to shift and change and grow because you have demonstrated your inability for many years to do that. Since 2018, you've had affordable policy, affordable housing options, and the conversation has been on the table. So the negligence and the draconian policies that your marching orders are coming from, Mark Washington, who has control over this oligarchical society, uh, your marching orders, uh, your bosses came in because maybe we're, we're making a fuss and, and calling out the gentrification of every housing policy you have because it's 60 to 80 percent AMI, which cannot actually solve the root cause or the heart of this problem, which is tied intimately to the policing issue that has been in national attention. We have so many activists who quickly have shared the fact that this ordinance is even a thing, and we will have hundreds of people sharing, if not thousands of people seeing, and on a national stage. Grand Rapids politics will be playing out, and what you do here will be seen and heard. And if you listen to these business owners, who I almost want to thank for showing overtly how racist and how tone deaf they are to come in here and say that the solution to the housing issue is just to send them all to jail for loitering, for, for pleading for help. That could be any one of you. And you put some holiday decorations, and I would love to say good job. Yes, Selena, Sunita, your, art, your pushing for equity has made it a value for the city, but they're optics at best. And Kurt Rapart, you are a great ally, and you have done great work, and I know this is the beginning. I think you can do more after being in this static space where nothing is truly done for the people you care about most and that you will rise higher from this position and that you will do so much more, and so will you, Sunita, and anyone who chooses to truly defend the will of the people. You will do well. And now is dark, and the darker days are coming. But we will grow lighter in that darkness, and we will take from you whatever you try and throw at us. And the homeless can't defend themselves. They can't defend themselves, and it could be you, your sister, your brother, your wife, your daughter, who gets a mental illness or something. All right, your time's up. Are going to thank him? All right, others wish to be heard? It's Kai. Um, wow. The way you guys lit up when you got all the crazy ass thank yous and well wishes and the end of the year, I'm going to miss yous. If only you showed that much enthusiasm when listening to everyone, right? Let's all also remember why I even started coming here. Justice for Patrick Leoya. He will seek justice. Um, Oh boy, what's his name? Not even worth mentioning. We'll be in court tomorrow, so it'll be nice to see how much more sicker he got. Um, I'm wondering, Bliss, have you ever stopped to talk to a houseless member of this community that wasn't pre-set up for you, right? Like, you know, showboating a little spaghetti here or, you know, photo op, because I mean, if you get regular people asking you about budgets arrested for harassment and causing a disturbance, then I would probably guess not. So I'm not holding too much faith in the fact that now we have to deal with you considering this. It's sick because these people are eating with you. You eat with these people. You like these people. These people bring you money and good face and good look for your city. Are you going to eat out their hand like the dog that you've shown us that you've been and that you are? Are you going to grow some balls? <laughs> right? Because they're sitting there up on your chest. And do what's right. And literally burn that, sh that piece of paper. Probably not. Drop the charges on the activist. I myself am facing four felony charges for assault of Grand Rapids police officers. Fraudulent, all of it caught on video, 
But here I am going to trial in April while I got two kids to take care of and a home to take care of. But because you're afraid of my words, I might spend, what, two years per count? That's eight. How do you think that's going to go over for me? Drop the charges on activists. It's sick what this city is doing because your feelings were hurt, Karen. Ooh, ouch. You are a fucking Karen. All right, your time's up. You are. You are. Your time's up. A Karen. Your time's up. You your time's are up. a Karen. Your time's the up. The city of Grand Rapids is a All right. Karen. We're gonna, you may as well go back We're going to end public comment. You need to sit down. I'm just taking my You can sit down. You can get away from All right, I'm closing public you comment, period. I'm going to turn to my colleagues. Public comment is closed. Get out of my way so that I can go sit, right? Right. You guys aren't to be faked. You're a disgrace. I can't wait All right, you're disrupting you. you're disrupting our meeting. Yeah. I'll you're disrupting our meeting. Yeah. You need to you need to leave. You're disrupting our meeting. No, I'm going to sit and listen to your weak ass responses. Oh. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to turn to my colleagues and I'll start over here with Commissioner Liner. I, I, I close public comment. It's done. I, I actually have the ability to close public comment whenever I choose. Well, can you send it to us in an email? Mr. Scott, public comment's closed. It's, I'm going to turn to my colleagues on the commission. Commissioner, Commissioner Lanier. Mr. Scott, please sit down. Okay, Lucas. I close public comment. Don't argue, argue with him outside. No. Mr. Scott, please sit down. I'm, I'm closing public comment, and you need to sit down or leave. All right. I, Lucas, I'm a, no more. I'm turning to my colleagues. Well, we're going to start over here with Commissioner Lanier. Thank you all for coming out, and thank you for your comments this evening. It has been truly an honor to serve this city as your third ward commissioner. I am grateful to have been called and elected to this work. I'd like to thank all of my colleagues and appointed officials for making the past years memorable. I didn't say what kind of memories, but <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Um, and then I'd like to thank the hardworking city staff. I won't start naming names, um, but you all know who you are those who spent countless hours responding to my many questions and indulging me with my many ideas. I know I'm many of your favorite commissioner, and um, I do have some recommendations for some other favorites when I leave, if you want. Um, I'd like to thank my family for sacrificing over the years, including tonight, as I missed a choir concert for one of my children, but happy to see that she's made it here tonight and I should have her come and sing that song that I missed. Um, I'd like to thank my friends and colleagues for the kind words, the cards, the flowers, the gifts, um, the gestures, the job offers. Everybody has a, ready to spend all of my time in 2023. And, um, I'm just grateful for the encouragement um, that I've received over the years from many of your familiar faces even here with us tonight. I'm looking forward to celebrating a little bit more on Thursday. Um, and though there's more work to be done, I pray that I've left things better than I found them. See you all later. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Ruppert. Yeah, thanks, Mayor. Um, the city manager said I could talk as long as I wanted tonight, so I'm going I'm to take advantage. But, um, <laughs> I won't make you push it. But I do, uh, and I typed this out, so forgive me if I read it. But before, before I share some final thoughts on my time on the city commission, I, I did want to speak to this issue that so many people spoke to us about tonight one last time. And I really believe that this is a solvable issue for our community. Um, I'm proud that the city, during my 10 years of commissioners investing more to address this issue than ever before. Thank you, city manager, for going along with our ideas. 
And while it's not a perfect number, some people use the number 4,000 tonight, but in our point of time count, there are about 1,200 people who are experiencing homelessness in our community. That's a solvable issue. But it's not an issue of individual choice and behavior. People become homeless for countless of reasons. Many of them are because multiple systems have failed these people. When upwards of 60% of our unhoused population are black, that's an indicator that this is not related to individual behavior. It's a systemic problem. When someone is ready to reach out for assistance for substance abuse or mental health in Grand Rapids and they can't find it, that's not their fault. That's our fault. And where there are gaps at every level of housing need in the city, especially for those below 30% of the area median income, um, that's a systemic failing. Ultimately, the voices of a few people can't dictate this conversation. If we're seeking to begin a new chapter in embarking and investing in this issue, the perspective of business can't be the starting place or the only emphasis. That said, I'm grateful for those business leaders who want to be a part of finding the right solutions. I acknowledge that in my comments last week, there wasn't a whole lot of empathy for the businesses that came to our meeting and shared their experience. I want to say tonight that I know that it's been difficult. I know that urgency is increasing. And I want to say that I agree with those who signed the letter that it's clear that there's a problem that we need to address and quickly. But I was angry last week. I'm still angry today. It's one of the things that I'm leaving the commission, one of the emotions I'm leaving with the commission in my heart. Um, the major, th I'm still not sure um, why this came forward because I know that we can do better as a city than this ordinance proposal. The major thought leaders from around the country who talk about how to address homelessness do not promote this type of solution. So why would we? The nonprofits and the residents also have to deal with these challenges. And while they're certainly not without complaint, uh, the solutions that they propose are different. Yeah, we have a moment. Uh, oh, hold on. I got lost. In my opinion, they're the people who we ought to be looking to in a moment like this to help illuminate the path forward. Thank you for the gentleman from Disability Advocates who came tonight. Those kinds of comments are the things that ought to be leading our thinking about this. If we want to solve this problem, we've got to look to those who are working most closely with this population for those systemic solutions. And all systems that have a touch point with that population will need to adapt. And we also have a moment in our community where we have nearly all the resources that we need to make tremendous progress for the most vulnerable residents of our city. I believe we can do it. But in order to affect that change in a significant enough way, it's going to need to stay front and center in front of this body, just like the policing conversations have over the past five years. So I think while I have a whole lot of other things that I want to say about the issue, my simple challenge to the city commission is to make it a regular conversation in these coming months. City manager, I have full confidence that you and your team will find the options for moving forward. You have shown me again and again that your team will give it your best effort and will innovate. To my colleagues who are going to stay up here, Commissioner Isasi, Commissioner O'Connor, Commissioner Moody, Mayor Bliss, uh, I know your hearts and minds, and I have, I have trust that you'll do the right thing. And for those who are joining next month, they have a lot to catch up on quickly. <laughs> but I say to them that they're surrounded by a great team. I'm sure that each one of them will bring something important and new to the discussion. End these thoughts with a quote from Wendy Randall, who spoke last week from the Essential Needs Task Force. Placing the well-being of the most at risk first is of the utmost importance, is what she wrote in her letter to us. This is where this needs to begin, and that is what ultimately will result in the outcomes that will truly improve the quality of life for our residents who are unhoused. I could talk about that all the rest of the night, but I'm going to move on to some other things. So I looked in the mirror this morning before I left, and uh, the, in the last five years, I've aged significantly uh, since I first stepped up here. But serving the city in this capacity has been one of the greatest experiences of my life. Uh, as I said before, I am leaving with all of the emotions in my heart. I want to say thanks to everyone who voted for me. I want to say thanks to everybody who made a comment at one of these meetings, sent an email or letter or called. 
I want to thanks, thank everybody who supported me, thank the people that challenged me, and thanks the people that joined hands with me. I made a list of all the city staff I wanted to thank, but I knew that I would list people off. But it has been an absolute pr pleasure serving with the staff of this organization in every department, every single department. I learned so much. Uh, they were gracious with me, and they truly helped me help the residents of the First Ward. It's been an absolute pr pleasure to work with you. And I'm truly proud of what we've accomplished together. Um, while we have more to do, obviously, I'm particularly proud of our work around affordable housing, which is my greatest passion. Since I get the mic one last time, I'll say that this issue, affordable housing, touches all the other issues. And intersectionality is going to be key to expediting the changes that we hope to see. I believe that this body, this group, thank you, has laid the groundwork for us to have success. I also say this. I did my level best in this job. Um, I gave it my full-time effort for the last three years, but I know I wasn't perfect. I know I sometimes didn't get back with people. I know that sometimes I didn't do the things that people wanted me to do, and for that I apologize. Really all I want to do tonight is to turn to my brilliant colleagues. And, I, and I'll say this to you all out here, these are the finest group of people that I have ever worked with in my life. Um, and I want to start with John. Uh, thanks for making that phone call six years ago. I kept the voicemail on my phone for five years, and then when I got a new phone last year, I finally deleted it. Uh, but thanks for giving me that chance. Thanks for calling me and believing that I would bring something to this table and having faith in me. You've taught me more about all of this up here and how it works than anybody else. It's truly a valuable strength that you bring to this team. And I also always love that I know where you stand. I never had to guess what John O'Connor was thinking. And you've been incredibly consistent in your call for fairness and good outcomes. I also know that there are moments where I could have been a better teammate to you, and for that I apologize. Um, but I'm really grateful that you're my friend. Nate, your depth and history of connection in this community has had a great impact on me. Whenever we were sitting in a moment and I was wondering what to do, I remembered that you were the pastor and the funeral director for so many weddings, so many funerals, so many things that really matter to people in this community. And I'm so thankful that you're going to continue to sit up here. I encourage you to bring the fullness of those relationships to this work. Mindy. I re I'm truly going to miss working with you. You have been a, become a special person in my life. And I appreciate your honesty, your authenticity, and your deep strength. As somebody, my, me, who is a verbal processor, you've been an excellent thought partner. So thank you for that. I'm so glad that you too will continue to sit up here in this next important season. Joe, man, I'm going to miss hearing you speak. I'm going to miss hearing your words. Uh, you are a poet and a man of peace. Uh, and I want to thank you for all the ways that you've inspired me. And I want to thank you especially uh, for the words that you articulated in some of the most critical moments of our city in the last five years. Um, thank you. Uh, and thank you for your integrity. Rosalind, I feel like when I first started, you took the time to get to know my heart. I get accused of being a open-hearted leader, and, uh, uh, which I think is a great thing. Uh, but I'm just really thankful that you took the time to get to know my heart. And there were moments where you trusted my heart, and I want to thank you for that. And I want to thank you for giving so much of your life and career to this work. So much of your life and career. I have no idea what it's like to sit in that seat, uh, but it's a harder seat to sit in than the ones that we sit in, and I appreciate you. Sunita Lanier, you have been a teacher to me. When I think of the most poignant moments of the last five years, your words and your actions are the things that are often running through my mind. So thank you also for giving so much of your life and career to this work. 
And it is true, you are the funnest commissioner. I affirm, <laughs> I affirm that sentiment. <laughs> best answer. <laughs> I do. And best dancer. I like and best dancer. dancer, yeah. I definitely am not the best dancer. My kids are cracking up. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to say to you again, city manager, I, 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 I have so much confidence in your leadership. One of the best decisions I got to cast a vote for was hiring you. And I will continue to think of you and pray for you all the time, uh, even as I leave this work. To Anita, you also got to know my heart. And I'll never forget the conversations that we shared in your office. And while probably the greatest learning curve for me was all of the legal business, so there were a lot of times where I didn't like the answers that you had to give me, you always gave them to me with graciousness and explained them carefully, and I'm grateful for that. Joel, you are, we joke in our house, you are just the most earnest clerk, I think, in the state. And so... Thank you for just loving elections and loving the things that matter. And, and I said to you this morning, the fact that you announce basketball games in your hometown of Byron Center still every Friday night, you're just a man of, of community, and I really appreciate that about you. Um, John Globensky doesn't get to sit up here with us. I don't know if he's in the room tonight. I don't think he is, but watching. he's watching at home. Well, hey, John. <laughs> Uh, our, our city treasurer is one of the most innovative people in the city, uh, and he saves so much money for the city, and then we get a chance to spend that money. And so I'm incredibly thankful for the work that John does and for his creativity and innovation. Two quick shout-outs. I did get to serve with Dave Allen, Dave Allen up here and Ruth Kelly, and so I'm incredibly grateful to them both as well as Greg Sundstrom and Eric DeLong in the city manager's seat. So I'm thankful for what I learned from those two men. I also want to make sure to express my appreciation to Dallas and to Jesse and to Raphael and to Laura and to Monica and to Brian because this work just doesn't happen alone. Our families support us in it. Um, and so I, my family's in the back. And so I'm... Also thankful to my daughter, Raya, and Cohen. I love you so much. And to my wife, my great love, Mattia. Um, this has been a season unlike any other in our 20 years of marriage. And I'm just, the depth of love that I feel for you at the end of it, um, I'm so grateful for you. All right, one last thought. <laughs> Pages long. I know, I wrote two pages. I wrote two pages. So, Grand Rapids, our city's at a really important moment. Coming out of this pandemic, the spotlight has shone brightly on the disparities of our city, especially the racial disparities that persist. Whatever words you want to use, reallocate, reimagine, reprioritize, recalibrate, there are adjustments that we need to make right now to truly care for those who are the most vulnerable in our community and who are being left behind from fully participating in this incredible growth of our city. During the last five years, we've had three of the best development years on record in our city. And we learned in our economic development project team on Tuesday that we're on pace to have the highest one this year. The business community is doing well. And there is money available to address these things. But 52% of the people who live in Grand Rapids are still struggling. And an incredibly broad and diverse group of residents are asking the city to take on this task. It's imperative right now that the city create an environment. That's what the city commission can do, is just create the environment that creates the conditions for equity, creates the conditions for affordability, and creates the conditions for a sustainable city. Ultimately, my greatest desire is for all who call Grand Rapids home to find healing, to find safety in their bodies, and to feel loved. While those might seem like bleeding heart hippie ideas, systems can promote and support these things. And if any town can do it, I believe that it's Grand Rapids. I will be rooting for all who sit up here, and thank you for the honor and privilege of serving the city in this way.
you, Commissioner Park. So now I'm like Joel last week, and I got to follow you. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to say. Um, first, thank you for the briefing that we had today in public safety. I was able to sit in there and hear the comments. Um, as was noted, we do not have an ordinance in front of us, um, and I was really grateful for city manager with the, quick, the quickness that you had and your entire team um, to be able to respond to the comments, looking at it, again, not just from a policing perspective, but from all of our departments, all of the individuals, um, and so I'll look forward to that next briefing that we have um, when I'll sit on public safety in, in January of the new year. Um, when I became a new commissioner in 2020, I knew many of you already. Um, and I'm glad that I did, because in 2020, as you know, we had six meetings in person, and then we went right into that virtual world. And I just want to say I'm, I'm grateful to all of you, um, and especially to those colleagues that are, that are leaving today. You know, Joe, I, I can't remember how we actually met. Um, maybe it was blend, maybe it was something back in the day, um, but I am very sad that you and I won't be able to serve together next year. But I know that it's just to see you later, we'll see each other, we'll stay connected. And I just want to thank you personally for many of the things that you have done to support me and my family, um, and just being somebody to, who's always willing to listen. I agree with the poet comment, Commissioner Repart. Uh, Commissioner Repart, I don't, I, well, I remember I met you when you were running, and I was like, this guy's pretty cool, um, and I like campaigning, and I went to your house, and you and your family bought me lunch, <laughs> and I got a t-shirt, it was pretty, super soft, and <laughs> it's important in campaigns, and um, I have said this, and I'll say it again, you are a better person, me, better person than me. You are so open, uh, creating the space for vulnerability, just sharing what your thoughts are, um, as somebody who often compartmentalizes my feelings, I appreciate you, and I'm sad that this side of the table's breaking up, because um, this is a good side of the table, too. Um, but I appreciate you, and I appreciate the, um, I talked to somebody the other day, and they asked me, you know, kind of what was I going to miss the most about you, is just the intense, you know, the two-page letter, no surprise. It probably was 12, and he got it to two. Um, <laughs> you know, and all those pieces. So I hope you get some respite and I hope you can relax. Um, as somebody who is an empath, I know that this has been a lot, um, but I know you were up for the task, so thank you. Commissioner Sunita Lanier. <laughs> some may think it's interesting that you and I met about 10 years ago. <laughs> Don't look at me that way. Uh, gosh, I ran into you in Dallas and your kids at the mall in 2012, and you said, hey, I want to talk to you about something. And I said, I don't want to be a school board member. <laughs> and you said, I'm not trying to talk to you about that. I still don't know why you stopped me that day. I really don't. But I'm so glad that you did. Through all the times that I tried to run for office and didn't win, which was at least three, you always reminded me that there was something else. And I never imagined that the something else would be to be your colleague here on City Commission. I have not been prepared for this day, and it especially will just be see you later. The two words that I would use to describe you are elegance and grace. You're both extremely kind, beautiful, caring, but you have a strength like nobody else. And I will just miss you immensely as a friend and to be able to say that we were the commissioners together. Our friend Tasha in the room the other day talked about the extreme burden it is to be the first, to be the only. As the first African-American woman on the Grand Rapids City Commission in 2013, not all that long ago, you will not know all that you did to pave the way for me and for our two colleagues that will come on. We'll have three women of color that sit on this body, and that in itself will be another moment in history that you were a part of. So I salute you, I celebrate you, I think I owe you lunch and dinner till the end of eternity, <laughs> um, but I just wanna say thank you, and you need all the roses, I want you to have all the roses and all the respite. Um, this has been a lifetime of service, and so people might just know you on here, they might just know you in this last term, 
but this is a lifetime of service, and I know that you will continue to serve this beautiful city with all that you have and all the love that you have, and I just, I just want to say thank you. And lastly, I just want to say to the people who have come out every single night, I hope you get some respite too. Hey, even Lucas said he was going to take some time off. So Lucas, you're going to take some time off. I hope everybody does. We can come back refreshed. Thank you for the, for the decorations, Lucas, that you put out here. They were attributed to us. Um, but engaging in city government is so important. And we saw that there was a decline in that when we had our community survey and we did those sessions. So I hope and I invite that community engagement as we move forward. So thank you and have a good end of the year. Thank you, Commissioner. All right, over here, I think I'll start with Commissioner Jones and then go to Commissioner O'Connor and then Commissioner Moody. Thank you, Mayor. And I want to thank all the folks who came out uh, this evening. I would say over the years, I used to chuckle inside when um, there was the accusation of not listening to folk when they were speaking, I chuckled because I'm the youngest of nine and my daddy um, was, would, would force us to listen. In fact, if we didn't listen, he'd, he'd pull, pull our ears. And so there's something to be said about the importance of listening. And so I just want to let uh, all of you know that um, I have listened and uh, not just tonight, but every night that I've sat up here because I believe that your voice uh, is important, but even beyond that, you have the right to speak. Uh, whether it's something that I agree with or disagree with, I'm actually a firm believer in the power of uh, disagreeing without being disagreeable. And so uh, you have the, the right to do so, and I, I thank you again for your, uh, for your presence here because that also speaks volumes. It, it takes real commitment. I mean, obviously, we have, to, we have to be here, but again, you make it a point to be here as well to voice your opinion, and uh, I can appreciate that. I respect that. Um, I want to uh, just quickly recognize, again, my colleagues. I um, want to start with my colleague to my left, uh, uh, Nathaniel Moody, who I would best describe as a giver. He is someone I've known for, uh, for the 26 years that I've been here. I moved here 26 years ago from Detroit, and um, Nathaniel Moody was one of the first people that I met, and he has... Uh, very much become not just a colleague, but a, a, a brother as well as a father figure. And I was fortunate enough, obviously, to, uh, to sit under you um, at church and uh, am appreciative for that and the relationship that we have and just the ability to be able to, to serve with you. I, I, actually, kind of the joy and a treat. And so I'm, I'm very appreciative of that. Uh, to JOC, it's funny, uh, John, you're from the UP, I'm from the D. Um, that's a long way, brother. Um, but, but that's okay, because uh, you and I um, had the opportunity over the years to get to know each other. Again, that understanding that we can disagree without being disagreeable. And uh, I always appreciated that, man, the fact that we could um, talk about things. And Lord knows we were both very passionate about it. Um, and there was the recognition that we had to uh, just kind of come to understanding that you know, we're just not agree. We're not going to agree on certain things, but ultimately the goal was to do all that we could to make this city better. And so I appreciate the uh, opportunity I've had to get to know you and spend time with you, and look forward to doing that. You know, well, well beyond uh, my tenure here on the commission. Uh, to my colleague, my partner, uh, Melinda. Uh, again, as you've mentioned, it was I think it was blend when you and I got to know each other. And I thought it was pretty cool that I had a chance to, to serve with you in this capacity. And, you know, obviously, again, to also be a part of or to have you uh, here at this time in which you also made history, again, as being the first Latin, uh, Latina to be elected to the city commission. That's a big deal. And uh, I just want you to know that you are uh, someone who um, I can always tell people, uh, Commissioner Yasasi will listen to you, she will respond, and she will do the work necessary to try to get a, uh, an, an answer for you. It may not be an answer that you totally agree with or, or, or maybe, maybe want to debate, but she will, she will put the work in. And it's been an absolute pleasure and privilege to serve with you because um, you and I both had the opportunity to know your predecessor, uh, Ruth Kelly. And I think Ruth Kelly is in the... City Commission Hall of Fame somewhere uh, because she's just that type of leader 
And so it's been good uh, to, 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 uh, to do this thing with you. And I consider it, again, a, a pleasure and a privilege. Uh, to Kurt, uh, brother, they said it best. You are uh, one who possesses empathy. And that's a, that's a gift, man. That's an absolute gift. And I think it is so necessary for such a time as this because it's easy uh, to get cynical. It's easy to just get angry as we should. I like to refer to it as righteous indignation. Um, but my brother, you have led with great compassion. I remember when you, when you and I first connected and you were talking about running, my, 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 my primary uh, challenge to you was, brother, just do all that you can to represent our brothers and sisters in the southwest quadrant of the city, uh, because that, too, was a part of the first ward. And so I'm appreciative of your, your presence there, as I know that they, too, were extremely appreciative of your time that you spent there. Um, to Sunita Thompson Lanier, um, we have known each other for a long time, sis, and it has been, um, I remember when I first came on, you were at that time the only person of color on the commission. I joined you and we had the opportunity to finally work together, right? We had worked together in community. Um, I had watched you as you ascended on the school board, uh, but the opportunity to serve with you uh, was very much considered a treat to me simply because uh, you uh, and I, I think, had the opportunity to kind of look at things from a couple of different perspectives and had made it a, um, very much made it a, uh, a priority to uh, be very open to what thus saith the community. And so I'm appreciative of your uh, longtime presence uh, in community. But also I can't help but to think about that time when we were, uh, you and I had just watched a uh, very, very, very difficult um, video, uh, the body cam footage of our sons who were being um, uh, who were being uh, instructed to walk backwards um, because they were they were pulled over um, over by the uh, what is it Croc the Croc Center yeah. and we watched that thing man it was with Chief Rohensky we watched that thing and. We just, we, 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 I remember we shed some serious tears because my firm belief is, is that didn't know any of those young men, but they were, they were our sons. And I think the, the more that we can look at all of the young people in our city and see them as our own, that's when things will get better. If we can see them as our own, I've got four of my own, but I recognize all of the young men in this town as my sons young ladies in this town as my daughters. And so I'll never forget that because um, we didn't have to say anything. We didn't have to say anything. And I'll, uh, I'll keep that very much close to heart. Uh, to our mayor, uh, two dates in particular stick out to me in terms of uh, times that were, um, I think extremely difficult. One was the 30th of May. That's when uh, there were there was an uprising, so to speak. Um, some would even go so far as to call it a riot or riots in our downtown. And uh, you and I and Brandon Davis walked the, the downtown, and um, there was just this feeling of wow. And uh, as mentioned, I come from the D, and I love history. I love Black history. And so uh, I understand um, what rioting means. I understand what, uh, what it means to respond in a way that perhaps the masses don't understand or can understand. But uh, it was that time, I think, in which, again, literally, you and I walked the, the downtown. And there was this, um, I think, this recommitment uh, because we knew that, you know, clearly, uh, systems and structures were broken, uh, but it, they were very much impacting our, our city. And so um, I think uh, I give thought to that, that day because it was late into the, uh, the night, into the early morning. And um, I've always appreciated you because 
um, I put next to your name, uh, you're resilient. And um, it's, you know, where we, our, our, our decision to sit up here, um, it, is, it's, it ain't easy. Uh, but the reality is, is that um, I said this uh, since I took the L in November, that um, uh, these last two and a half years have been hell. They've been hard. Um, and, it's, and, it's, it, and it's not because so much the, you know, what we've received, the blowback from community. And that's, that, that has not been easy. But, you know, the other date that I want to mention is April 4, because my life changed on April 4. I didn't know Patrick Leo. Leo it doesn't matter. He, that was my brother. And when he was murdered on that morning, I was impacted. And this is this is my city, man. I, lo I love G Rap, right? I love the six one six. I want the best for it. I know it's so far from perfect. I happen to come from a city that I think is perfect. Some would disagree, but I think Detroit in many ways is perfect. I call it the center of the universe, but I digress. Um, but, but, but there's something to be said about an opportunity to, as I think Kurt mentioned, a lot of the stuff that we're looking at, it's, it's fixable, man. It is. But it takes resources. It takes folks to get out of the way. It takes, folk, it it takes folks to get in the way. It takes all those things. But I think that we... As I've always coined Grand Rapids, we're a legitimate medium-sized city with big city problems. And so, um, and, and, and not just big city problems, but it's complexity. Freaking kidding me? We're talking about issues that have been around for, for centuries. And like I said, I, I love history, but I know enough history to understand that this ain't something that just, you just turn around overnight. It, it, it is, it's a hard work, and it's never fast enough, and I get that. I get that because my ancestors uh, could speak to what it means to wait. And so I get that. I happen to appreciate the fact that, you know, to, to, to operate with a sense, with, with a greater sense of, of urgency. We need to be, we need to be operating with a, with a, with a, with a state of emergency as it pertains to our beloved community, in particular for our African-American sons in Grand Rapids, in particular, that particular audience. And so I thank you, uh, Mayor, for your leadership. I want to close with the, 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 the last three who are here on the dais. Joel, I, I wrote down to you next to your name, Endurance. Brother, you, 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 you had to endure some pretty significant elections, man. And you came at a time in which there was a lot being thrown at you, and you endured. You, you, I mean, you, 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 you were able to improve with each election because each election seemed to be more difficult. And... I give you credit, man, for, uh, look, I, I know, there, there, but there's also 24, right? right. But, but, but for the time that you've put in, I appreciate, I appreciate you and what you've done uh, for the city clerk's office. To Anita, uh, graceful, uh, there is, uh, you've got a story, as we all do, and um, I never forget uh, when we sat up here, and again, I was fortunate enough, we were all fortunate enough to be able to, uh, the vast majority of us, to be able to appoint you. And so I thought, I, I know it was a great decision. I'm grateful for your, your presence on this day. It's your, uh, your, your, your demeanor is one of uh, being very inward, uh, but you're very thoughtful. And I appreciate the fact that you bring uh, to the table uh, wisdom and knowledge of the law. And that's important. And lastly, uh, our city manager, uh, I got next to your name, Warrior and Battle Tested. Uh, we are all the better because you decided f uh, over four years ago to say yes to our city. I am a firm believer that you could manage any freaking city in the United States of America, but we just happen to, we're, we're, we just have to be fortunate to have you here. And I know your story. I know where you come from. I know the struggle. And I know that you are like many of us aren't, aren't necessarily in the position to kind of go out there and tell our story, but I appreciate you, man. And I know that uh, our city is in really, really good hands uh, because you're the city manager. Folk will continue to, I think, uh, challenge you and attempt to call you out. Uh, but again, uh, you tough, man. 
you, you battle test it. And uh, all I can do is, is hope that uh, our city will continue to move in the direction in which more people have access to opportunities, in particular those who have been historically marginalized. Mm -hmm. They deserve it the most. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner O'Connor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, did I hear that right, that Mr. Leverett decorated the dais? That explains my black bow, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I am not nearly as uh, eloquent or long-winded as my colleagues, as most of you know. But I do, I do want to say a little something about each of them. I just, Mr. Jones, you've been a, you've been a dear friend. You've uh, you've challenged me to be better. You've uh, engaged in some some very difficult conversations. And uh, to, to your point, you know, we might not have always agreed, but we've always been agreeable. And uh, you've been a good mentor and a good uh, someone willing to to call me on my BS when, when it was needed, and I needed that. And uh, I've, I've looked to you for for guidance and for wisdom in, in difficult times, especially as we've navigated difficult times uh, these past several years. And so, you know, I know you're not going to be sitting next to me anymore, but uh, I know that you'll still pick up my phone call and, uh, and help me, and I appreciate that. And I look forward to years of continued wisdom. Uh, Madam Commissioner Lanier, uh, I've had the privilege of serving almost 14 years of public life uh, on a dais with you, uh, and through some, you know, challenging times at GRPS, through some some challenging times here, and I feel like uh, both those institutions are better uh, today than they were when we both started because uh, of hard conversations we had to have together. And don't let that fancy uh, white suit fool y'all. Cindy uh, <laughs> Lanier is a cage fighter. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, you know when she gets something in her craw, she doesn't let it go. And mm -hmm. I have probably battled Sunita more than any person in in my elected life, uh, for better or for worse. We've been on the same side, getting a lot of good things done. And there's lots of times we don't agree, but uh, you know, to the point of being uh, a, a agreeable. Uh, you know, at the end of every time, she's like she's like a big sister to me, my older sister. Um, uh, you know, we're like fam. Right here. No, no, I got more than it? you. Uh, you know, we we uh, we might we might disagree vehemently on the dais. We might uh, you know say some things uh, to one another, but uh, we always hugged in the hallway when we we're done. Right. So mm -hmm. I appreciate that. My man Kurt, I love you, buddy. Uh, I knew when I asked you to do this six years ago, it was gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard for you. Uh, I know your heart. You got a, you got the biggest heart about anybody I know, and uh, yeah, man, I'm gonna be sad. I'm sad to not have you up here anymore. But you, uh, you gave it your all. You, uh, you know, you always put everybody before you. That's who you are. You're a man of, of, you know. I've never once in my life questioned your integrity or your heart for service. And you know, it's messy up here. It's real messy in politics. We all know that. And and you, uh, I think you were willing to go way outside your comfort zone to try to serve the people of Grand Rapids. And uh, you've you've certainly challenged me to be better. You too have called me on my BS when it was needed. Uh, we've had lots of really joyous conversations and and many you know difficult conversations. And I too. You know, we'll continue to, to lean on you and rely on you for your, your wisdom and your counsel. And, uh, you know, got two more years of this left, and I want to, you know, like you, I want to leave it a better place than, than where I started. So thank you for everything you've done, sir. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Eckhart Tolle once said that the past has no power over the present moment. And at this moment, Commissioner Rappard and Lanier and Jones, each of you have played a very important part of my life in coming on this commission. Each of you have given me wisdom. Each of you have taken me under your wings and shared with me information that I did not know. And then there were times when I made uh, the opportunity to vote on issues that I wasn't necessarily prepared to vote on. You came back and explained to me, each of you, in your own right, as to what that vote was about. I appreciate that. When I came to this commission, each of you voted on me to be appointed. Uh, you said that you were going to wait until the following two days to pick a, 
individual you picked that night while I was out on the golf course playing <laughs> golf. <laughs> If it wasn't for Commissioner Jones calling me back and saying you need to get back here, I probably would not have been chosen. <laughs> <laughs> but because of that, I have learned so much these last four years in being on this board from each of you. And each of you, I pray that God would give you your desires of your heart as you move further into doing something more important besides this city commission, but being an advocate for the city as well. I can't point out any specific thing for each of you because everything that you've done is important. And every specific piece of your life <clears throat> has made an impact in mine. Commissioner Jones uh, sat under me for 25 years as a young minister growing up, and now the role has reversed. I now sit under him. And so therefore, it is important for us to realize that in life, things do change. Uh, and I am appreciative of all of you, and I wish you all well. And as uh, the one of the youngest members on this board, I feel like I'm losing my big brothers and sisters as well. Mm -hmm. um, before Yasasi came on, I was the baby. <laughs> but now my role changes. I am a senior, so I hope to be an advocate to those new commissioners who are coming on. And to all of you at this moment, let me thank all of you for your words and for your words of encouragement, uh, your words that have helped me understand that there's yet more to be done in the city of Grand Rapids. And yes, I have helped the homeless. I have housed the homeless. I have fed the homeless. And yes, our business has been very impactful for 98 years in taking care of the city of Grand Rapids. For those who have no place to go to be buried, we've given up our funds to take care of those families, and we fed them. And our church did the same. No longer pastor, but the new pastor will do that as well. So the power, as I said earlier, the past has no present mm -hmm. over today. This moment is what exists. And in 2023, there would be no darkness. There would be light. Because our goal will be to make Grand Rapids a better city, to take care of the homeless, to make sure that our law enforcement do what is important for the city of Grand Rapids. So don't think that you haven't been heard. You have. And those of us who are prepared to take our city to the next level, especially within our third ward, I'm accessible. Come talk to me. I have not always had a suit and tie. I grew up poor, very poor, holes in my shoes, peanut butter sandwiches, just like a lot of us up here. So we're not exempt from what you're saying. We believe in what you're saying. So don't take your perceptions, which equals your reality, and think differently than us. We're here for you. Okay. Eckhart Tolle once again said that we don't live life. Life lives us. So I hope that my colleagues as you move on, that you allow life to live you and that you allow to move in it. Because remember, life was here before you came and it's gonna be here when we leave. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, City Clerk. I'll just keep going with the hit parade. No, I, I'm very grateful for the three of you, um, especially for the two to the right of me who sat on that subcommittee. To, to do the interview panel, so um, it's your fault <laughs> for putting me forward. But I, I, do, I do appreciate it all. Um, it's going to be different having Commissioner O'Connor over here next year. Um, he can probably find his own pens and paper and... <laughs> uh, yeah, whatever. No, it, it, has been a, it has been a true honor. Um, I appreciate you uh, taking a, a chance on the Byron Township clerk um, in, in stepping up into a, a bigger role and... Um, Keep, and especially for you, Commissioner Lanier, for um, keeping me accountable mm -hmm. and when you're seeing things and for putting DeAndre and I on a basketball team. <laughs> um, and so we do have to go. We, I need a rematch against yeah. Pastor Bishop. <laughs> but um, I, I, do, I do appreciate it. Um, I think one of the things you told me is um, you're going to you're need to go, you're gonna need to grow. Mm -hmm. And I've grown immensely mm -hmm. under um, your leadership and working along with you. Um, as we talk about diversity and equity and how does that look in elections. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've learned a lot. I've also, um, I'm a little bit empathetic sometimes too. And so um, get emotional. Sometimes it comes out more 
comedic than there, so that's uh, my coping mechanism. But um, I appreciate it, and sometimes you told me to make sure I keep that in check, and then I don't. So, um, <laughs> but I try, so I, I do appreciate that. And um, so, Kurt, I do, it has, it has been a pleasure um, working alongside of you. Um, I've known the work that you did it the other way because um, our church has worked with them for over the years and we know the impact that that has been on the west side and for you to leave that to do other things to do full-time commission work which is not full-time pay um, I know I know how that goes and what what a sacrifice that is so I appreciate that and Commissioner Jones you're always better dressed than I am so <laughs> but um, no it, it's been great I've been in, I've been glad to have um, some real good conversations because I'm also a student of history and I don't have the history that you have. Mm -hmm. And so I've asked you some questions about, you know, as I'm struggling with city within a city and, you know, what does this mean for elections or what does this mean for voting? We've had some good conversations because I need to know, maybe not just Grand Rapids, just you and your lived experience of what is, what is how can I be better for the community um, through your experience. And I appreciate those conversations that we had. Um, now I gotta do a one little, little election thing, sorry. That's okay. Um, so we did, there was a, um, cause I really like elections. Really so um, there was, there was, there was a um, statewide recount um, that was unfortunate, it was, it was ridiculous, it was dumb, it was. Not to keep to the facts. I'm sorry, <laughs> I, I'm turning into Mark. Um, but anyway, um, we, Ken County did a great job. I, uh, hats off to Clerk Lyons for doing um, a recount in, in two days, um, um, which we thought was going to take a lot longer. And it did show that our, our elections are fair, secure, and accurate. So um, thank you to um, all the other county or the city clerks and whatever in the Grand Rapids area and Kent County that went out and um, did that recount to show that our elections were fair and secure. Yeah, thank you, City Clerk. Uh, city Attorney and then City Manager. Before giving sentiments, I'd like to thank and appreciate or acknowledge those that came out and voiced their opinions about the unhoused community. I appreciate saying that we don't need another ordinance. We don't need to punish. We need to give them other options. So um, thank you for that. And it's good for us to hear that and be held accountable. And I'd like to thank our commissioners, Commissioner Lanier, Commissioner Rapar, Commissioner Jones. I, it has been an honor and a pleasure to work with you. I have appreciated all our time together on many meetings, things we agreed on, things we didn't agree on. And I didn't prepare a long speech, but Commissioner Jones, when he um, had a descri word descriptor for everybody, I got to thinking about that and I thought about Commissioner Rapart, I, I think the word compassionate. You're so compassionate and your heart is so much in everything that you do. And I enjoyed our conversations a lot and I'll miss that. And um, I wish you well in your new endeavors that you embrace them like you embrace this with all of your heart and your hard work. Because this truly is, and this is for all of you, it's a lot of hard work and I don't think people realize just how much work it is and how many hours go into it. And sometimes it feels like a thankless job, but you continue and you push through and that's appreciated. Um, Commissioner Lanier, the word I thought about for you was she's a force. She is indeed a force and um, I would hate to ever be in the courtroom across from you. <laughs> But you too have an awesome heart, uh, so much love and passion. I think you do anything for anybody to help anybody. And so I will indeed miss you and I'll miss you holding us to task, including the Department of Law. And so I know that whatever your next season is, that you will do it and do it well and with excellence. And I thank you. And Commissioner Jones, I thank you as well. And the word I think for you is like sassy, because Joe was, Joe was right that um, you do dress better than he does. <laughs> but nonetheless, nonetheless, I appreciate you because you were part of that process of my being appointed. And I appreciate all through the years your encouragement and 
your hard work as well. And all of you, I got to say, your heart is in the work that you do. You committed, you work hard. You're here giving it your all, not just here in the organization, but in the community. And you've done that for years, even before you came to the city. And so thank you as well. And embrace your new season. Give it all you have and enjoy and enjoy life because we know that changes can happen in a day. And so best wishes. Thank you, City Attorney. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Um, today is a special day for three of the elected. As this being the last day that you were able to vote at the Committee on Appointments, your last day voting on CD, Committee of the Whole, Fiscal, your last um, commission night out, meeting your last remarks. But I would argue that it's the last of what we've seen on this side of the dais. I expect to see you on that side. I expect to see you engage fully in this community and the networks that you have built should result in this commission chamber overflowing in the respective leadership positions that you will have outside of uh, the commission without the need to be politically correct. So I expect to see the authentic use, uh, unencumbered by elected office on the other side. But I will say individually how much I admire, respect, respect and appreciate each of you. Um, I agree with all the comments that have been said, how Commissioner Repart is uh, so genuine and authentic. Uh, and Commissioner Lanier is such a force. <laughs> I will agree with that. But he is a person of principle and process, and I appreciate and respect that of her and uh, Commissioner Jones and uh, how um, deep is the word that I would use when uh, Joe is, is a very deep thinker, very deep thinker, and uh, is very um, considerate of all of the issues before opining and reflective and making a, a decision in a quiet storm. Uh, so I appreciate him and I especially appreciate him because if not, I mean, there was a recruiter that was hired by the city commission that made calls and encouraged people to apply. And there were people that were calling all over, but if not for the then Urban League executive director CEO making a call to the Urban League executive director CEO in Austin, and then personally speaking of the wonderful things that was happening in this committee, I mean this community, um, I'm not sure that I would be here today. So I and my family uh, owe all of you a debt of gratitude for your confidence in letting me serve here. But I want to especially thank you, uh, Commissioner Jones, for your uh, <coughs> personal interest in uh, my uh, coming here to being city manager. So I appreciate that. I, I want to uh, now... Um, I wish I could end on the, the thank yous and call it a night, but uh, there, there are some important things that have been discussed here today. And um, the issue of the unhoused community is very important. And I, I, I get a, a, a privileged seat uh, to not only sit here with the elected body, but also to see everyone in the audience. And today, um, I heard, as did uh, the other electeds and the city attorney, about some of the concerns and last week, we sat here with the same posture, and we heard from people who were uh, presenting a different perspective on the other side of the issue. And what I would like to call out today is uh, there was those same people that came last week were here today. But today, they listened. They didn't speak. They listened. And I am hoping that the same way... Um, some spoke today and others listen, will be the same way that we proceed when we re-engage in this conversation, that everyone can listen to other people's perspective and be heard. And I know it's probably hard for some people who just listen today, who are in positions of privilege and power and get to speak in various platforms, but they, 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 um, humbled themselves uh, today to hear uh, from other parts of the community. And so, and so I appreciate uh, that uh, sense of 
collaboration. Today we talked about some of the things that we were doing, uh, that have been doing and will continue to do in supporting the in-house community. And um, I am looking forward to um, solutions and taking up the challenges that uh, Commissioner Rephart laid out today and knowing that uh, when we come back in the new year, um, as we've talked about earlier today, there are a thousand shelter beds that are available, but we know the solution is not in just uh, overnight shelters. Those people have to have somewhere to go during the day. And this is not just a professional thing that I do. This is, this is real personal work. Someone asked me who, who, you know, it could be any one of us that was homeless. It, it, it was, it is my father that was homeless. And that a year ago he passed away on in this month. And so I'm going to do everything I can to honor him and the many like him who find themselves in that in that condition and do the right thing. It may not be what everybody wants. It may not be what everybody expects, but it's damn sure going to be the best we can do and the best that we've ever done. And that's what I'm committed to and looking forward to that in the new year. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, City Manager. And I'll, I'll start with that and just thank everyone and, and thank everyone who attended our Public Safety Committee meeting today. Thank my members of the Public Safety. I know last week I kind of threw it on you to add it to the agenda. Um, staff worked really hard to prepare for that. Uh, and I believe it was a really good conversation and discussion and really elevated a number of the issues. And I want to thank everyone in the community who have brought concerns to our table. It's a critical issue, and it will continue to be a critical issue and a priority uh, for me as well. And how do we resolve <laughs> complex problems? We bring people together, and we find solutions. That's what the city has done for decades, long before I sat up here. Uh, and I believe that we can do it. And I do believe, Commissioner Repart, that it is solvable. You and I have talked about this so many times for hours and hours. And uh, so I know we have the holiday ahead. Uh, the city will continue to do work to address problems and address concerns, uh, but know that this will be a top priority when we come back together after the holiday. And we'll be calling on our partners uh, in the community, both in the business community and in our nonprofit community, uh, and members that we know have been working in this space for a long time uh, to bring them to the table to talk about how do we move forward. Uh, so thank you, everyone. And, and I'm going to end uh, by saying a few words uh, about my colleagues up here as well. And as I think about our time together serving up here, uh, I started to make a long list of the things that we have accomplished together. And as you all said, there is still a ton of work to do. We know that. In fact, it's never ending. Every day, we have issues that we need to address. We try to be proactive, but we know a lot of what we do is respond to issues that come before us. Uh, but you know, when I, when I looked back over the last uh, several years, especially my time as mayor serving with all of you, uh, it's a long list of accomplishments. You all were around this table when we hired city manager. You all were the ones, we had talks about this, that we, 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 we put the first round to bed and we said we have to start over, that we have to do better for this organization and for the city. Um, you were around this table when we hired this guy, our city clerk, who's done really an excellent, excellent job with elections. And before he was here, we had issues with elections in the city. And we had, we had task force working on improving elections in the city. Uh, you know, you all were part of creating the very first strategic plan that our city has ever had that set out very clear objectives that is going to live long after we're all gone from this table and set the direction for the city for years to come. You are the ones that absolutely were committed to embedding equity into everything that we do within this organization internally. You were a part of helping create the first ever affordable housing fund. Commissioner Rappart, so appreciate your heart and help with housing in the city. The first ever homeless outreach team, the first ever co-response team, the first ever participatory budgeting process. The list goes on and on and on. Commissioner Rappart, outside of housing, you have been my ally on environmental sustainability. Before this commission, we tried to move forward big projects. 
And it was this body that moved forward, replacing LED lights, moving forward with the biodigester, building a solar array, reducing our carbon footprint, getting closer to renewable energy. You sat with me on that task force for years to come up with solutions. And we passed the climate action resolution. You have such a big heart. And everyone who knows you knows that. And you have so much integrity. So thank you. Commissioner Lanier, yes, everything is true people have said about you, but I love your passion. And you have been my partner and ally in pushing forward changes relating to childhood lead poisoning. You and I sat together month after month after month figuring out what can we do? How do we partner with county? How do we partner with the state? Knowing it's a multi-jurisdictional issue. Mm -hmm. And we, we accomplished great things. Education campaigns, enhanced lead remediation programs. The county has a lead action team now mm -hmm. that comes together that works on this issue. And we have brought millions of dollars back to the city to help with lead remediation in homes. We're doing the lead work in lines, but that's not where kids are being poisoned. And I really appreciate you for that. That has saved kids' lives. And Commissioner Jones, <clears throat> you are my brother. You are my confidant. We talk all the time. I bounce things off you. I value your wisdom. Uh, and you, since the day you were selected, appointed to serve on this body, you have said, my priority is reimagining public safety. You were the one that year after year fought to, for all of us to get on board and support Cure Violence, which is now underway and hopefully will be expanding. You led, I don't know if you remember this, you led all those listening sessions throughout the whole city, bringing hundreds of people together to bring forward ideas around solutions. You've served on our public safety committee. You walked with me at 2 a.m. in the morning, watching people break windows and starting places on fire, uh, all along saying we have to do things differently. And I'm really gonna miss you. So thank you for your work and your service. And ultimately, all of you have been a part of moving our city forward in so many ways. I could go on and on and on, um, but the impact and the legacy will last for generations to come. We have, I sat here listening to you and I've thought about the times that we have all cried together, we have laughed together, we have prayed together, we have struggled together, we've disagreed with each other, um, but we've always respected each other. And for that, I'm very, very thankful. I'm so unbelievably grateful and honored to have served with every single one of you around this table. Um, our city is a better place because of every one of you. Uh, and for that, I'm forever thankful. So I hope you have a wonderful holiday. I hope you get to sleep and relax and reset and refresh. Goodness knows you deserve it. People don't see the hours you spend doing this work. They really don't. So I do and I appreciate it, and I know our community's a better place because of you. So with that, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, we're adjourned. <laughs>